All right, everyone, how's it going? Today, I'm going to play Pokemon Crystal with only Venomoth. So yeah, please let me know what type it is in the chat, because without that, I'm going to have no clue what I'm doing. I think it is a Psychic Flying type, so follow me over on X, that's my handle. I sometimes post updates over there about what's going on on the channel. And yeah, this is technically my month off, so I'm just doing a bunch of fun streams and things like that while I'm not worrying so much about the production of videos. Honestly, um, yeah, that's actually kind of a lie. I am really worrying about the production. I am working nonstop behind the scenes to try and get things ready for the next year of content. Things are actually going a little bit slower behind the scenes than I wanted them to. I kind of thought that by the second week in January I would kind of be ready to go, but it looks like it's going to take the whole month to put things in place, and I'm not even going to get as far as I wanted to. But that's okay, things often move slower than I expect. And it's okay. Anyways, if you're curious, why is he streaming so much? It's annoying that he's streaming so much. Please do more produced videos, because I get a lot of those comments now. Um, I'm taking a month off. I released 31 videos in December. I hope that that was enough. Anyways, yeah, let's talk about Venomoth as a Pokemon and why I want to redo this one. So last year, I did a Venomoth video in Pokemon Crystal, and I didn't use Sludge Bomb. Um, was that a good choice? Probably not. Sludge Bomb is a really good poison type move, and Venomoth should definitely use it because it is more effective than Return when you are a poison type. If you're not a poison type, Return is better, and that's typically why I don't think about Sludge Bomb very much. After all, the poison type doesn't really offer any good coverage when the fairy type like doesn't exist. Plus, there are very few grass types that aren't a dual type with the poison type in Generation 2. There's Executor on Will's team, and then there's Erica's team, which has a, um, what's its name? It's not Roselia. It's the other one that looks similar, that evolves from Gloom. Why can't I think of its name? Oh my gosh. Um, it's not Roselia, but it, it, it looks like a grass type, and it is a mono grass type. I can't believe I can not remember this thing. Uh, Blossom, that's the one. Uh, and then Jumpluff. Those are basically the Pokemon that'll take super effective damage from Sludge Bomb. They took away Poison's super effective damage against bug types, which is really unfortunate and kind of disappointing. I liked that interaction from Generation 1. So yeah, the Poison type, not very good offensively, unless you're a Poison type. Uh, continuing with the bad news, Venomoth doesn't have very much physical attack, so its base stats are 70 HP, 65 attack, and 60 defense, 90 special attack, 75 special defense, and 90 speed. It's a medium-fast growth rate Pokemon, which is not great in the early game, but overall it's not the worst growth rate to do a solo challenge with. For a move pool, it's not as good as it is in Generation 1. It starts with Tackle, Disable, Foresight, and Supersonic. Unfortunately, no confusion until level 17. And then beyond that, it gets Poison Powder at level 20, Leech Life at level 25, Stun Spore at 28, Gust at 31, same type attack bonus move, Psy Beam at level 36, another same type attack bonus move, Sleep Powder at 42, and then Psychic all the way at level 52. I am going to play this run today uh, as if it is a first playthrough with Venomoth because technically the last run that I did on my channel was when I was still evolving during playthroughs in Generation 2. I have since changed that and I'm going to be starting fully evolved today. That will change things a lot because Venonat really struggled in the early game of Crystal. So, yeah... Um, I am going to be looking at chat because this is not actually a first playthrough. If you want to see my first playthrough with the Venonat and Venomoth line, go and check out the video that is in the description. Through TM and HM, it gets things like Sunny Day, which could be paired with Solar Beam. It's a special move after all, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I think I am going to be relying on moves like Curse, Return, Sleep Talk, Sludge Bomb, and Swift.
I know my overlay my overlay might be wrong, but you know, like I'm working really hard on the programming behind the scenes. I'm I'm doing everything I can every day to ensure that there are less glitches. But you know, just sometimes stuff uh stuff s sneaks through. You you could say in this case there was a bug because the overlay was poisoned, and uh, unfortunately. It's going to be wrong all day today. I couldn't fix it in time. But we'll just have to make peace with that. Oh, I do want to address something before we get going, and then, and then we are going to start this run. What I wanted to address is the fact that a lot of people have started to ask the question why I hired a programmer to work on my overlay. It's like, what happened that would cause it to break so much that you would have to hire someone to fix it? And honestly, that isn't really what's happening. Refactoring software is very standard in large software development companies. I've heard someone told me that like roughly every five years, most applications need to kind of be re-architected and rewritten to some extent. Um, again, I don't work in this field, so I don't know how true that is, but I always took that to mean after a while of having a piece of fixed software, you are going to have to do some amount of like major reworks to it and uh it has come to that point where it is time to re-architect and redesign my overlays if you don't know because you probably don't you're not behind the scenes uh like me every day my overlay is not actually one piece of software it is a separate piece of software for every single game that i play on the channel so even games like red which i play very rarely still have to be maintained so if i add a feature to say generation three like showing the enemy's types on the right-hand side of the screen. If I want to add that feature to every single other game that I'm playing, I have to go and update five other pieces of software to ensure that it works correctly. Technically seven, but the Nuzlocke overlay hasn't been used in a long time, so <laughs> we can just kind of count that one out for now. Also, because I wrote these softwares um, at different stages along my software development, it's just that... Um, yeah, it, um, it's just like, if you, um, yeah, anyways, like, some of them are really bad, some of them are decent, but not perfect, and going back and making that change across all of them, uh, would take probably, like, adding one small thing would take me probably 8 to 12 hours of, like, just sitting there, just working on that one problem, because everything is just so inefficient, so bloated, stuff breaks because the code is bad, um, so anyways, yeah, it needs to, um, uh, yeah, it needs to change. Um, Delpho, I totally disagree with you. I have considered removing the, uh, metallic meteorite texture. Every time I do, the overlay looks way worse. Um, having an element that creates the sense of perspective. So like you have the game on top of the Pokemon image and the game and the type icons are on top of the Pokemon image. The Pokemon image is behind the UA, UI elements. The ground is, like the Pokeball ground, is behind all of that. And then the texture is behind all of these things. And kind of in another like middle layer behind the Pokemon, but in front of the texture and behind the UI elements, is the diagonal element, which kind of breaks up the, all of the horizontal shapes that like guide your eyes from like left to right and then top to bottom. This is kind of like a line that takes you up from like resets up towards where the fast part of the time is running. Um, every time I take it out, it looks worse. So um, it's staying in. I keep thinking about what I could put there that would be more relevant, but uh, that is like, cause it needs to not take a lot of attention, but it just needs to kind of be there. So yeah. Yeah, if you make a mock-up for me, I, I think it needs to be some kind of stationary textured element that is a real-world texture that is diagonal in shape and guides the eyes um, through the elements in a non-horizontal or vertical direction. Okay, that's my thoughts about the di diagonal stuff on my overlay. Okay, so we're going to play Crystal Version with Venomoth. Let's do it. Uh... Kami, uh, Kami Kiku. Kami Kiku. Thank you for the 10 euros, by the way.
Uh, we just had a stream error for a second. Apologies. I believe I have reconnected now. Um, not really sure what happened there. Anyways, this is Venomoth in Pokemon Crystal. Yeah, it's a bug. It's very fitting for this run. Well, not really. Venomoth's not a bug type. I do realize if you're a new viewer, you'll probably be really confused during this entire stream. So thanks for joining me. I appreciate you. Hopefully you'll hang out long enough to know that I actually uh, do know my stuff. Um, we gotta call it like Psychic, I think. It's the only proper name. We'll call it Psy. P-S-Y. Yeah. John, thank you for the five. Um, five dollars in another currency that I don't know what it is. Okay, so we get tackle as a starting move. It's not great. Um, kind of slow to level up, that sort of thing. So many videos this week. Well, so many streams. Not no videos this week. I warmed up already today. I did a run behind the scenes filming content. Right now, one of the software problems that needs to be solved before I can really feel like I'm ready to go filming in like my new software suite is that we have to get it so that when we're recording a replay file within the Super Chucky emulator, that when that's happening, it's recording the real time as well. If it doesn't record the real time, then if I go to re-record the run, while my overlay does start the time automatically when I press new game, there is like a slight discrepancy, I think due to round trip latency, that causes somewhere between 15% uh, of a second to half a second delay. We have never had more than a second delay refilming a run up until this point, and we've refilmed quite a few behind the scenes. But that like half a second ooh we almost got me that half a second delay if it's like in the wrong part of the second can look like a full second delay and i usually truncate off the milliseconds when i report my times but if i do that and it's like technically one second higher then the pokemon is getting a worse placement or a better placement um it's usually the case that refilming the runs with uh the emulator makes the run slightly faster. So like, uh, usually it's about a quarter second faster. Anyways, that's one thing I'm trying to solve. I don't want to have to talk about this in every vi video because if someone watches the live stream, they're going to be like, the time was one hour, 31 minutes and one second. And then when my video reports one hour, 31 minutes and zero seconds, they'll be like, that's not the same run, he's cheating, and then I have to like make a 15 second disclaimer in every video and tell people to read the description, and who reads the description? So, no one's gonna read it, and then everyone's just gonna be confused, and there's gonna be a bunch of comments, oh, that crit, <laughs> I've lived on one health, alright, good. Um, fine, I'll run away from this one, waste some time. Yeah, so we, we need to get it so that the timer is just extremely accurate. Uh, initial playthrough and then repeated playthrough. These are the kind of things that... Um, these are the kind of things that keep me up at night. Like, I literally sit in bed and go like, I don't feel ready to film, like, the video for two weeks from now because I cannot yet accurately re-record the run that was recorded at 60 frames per second and I need to re-record it in 240 frames per second, but I can't... Oh, Rosie, no! So, uh, you can't go behind the monitor. You can't. If you disconnect it, I will not be able to play. We don't go back there. That is the forbidden place. <laughs> okay, um, we almost had a cat-induced bug, but luckily, we, we are, uh, we are continuing. Oh... Also, I would post more pictures of Rosie, but she's a black cat, and like when you photo photograph her, it usually just looks like her eyes. You can't see anything else. She blends in with everything. Wow, I missed so many times against this Pidgey. Oh my gosh, and it sound attacked me. 
See, there's a small thing. Did you see how the accuracy popped up on my overlay? There was a space remaining for the held item. So I used to always show the held item, even if my Pokemon didn't have a held item. But I think that kind of looks a little bit sloppy. Like I would rather remove an element when it has no data and then have it appear when there is something useful to see there. That's a UI um, design thing. I, I think that having it... Um, but then having the accuracy be lower down, like it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So what should happen is if the held item fades in when there is an accuracy modification, the accuracy modification should like kind of like automatically animate and shuffle down. But I am not capable of implementing that with my current setup on my overlay. So we need to refactor in order for that to be possible. Uh, I'm going to go into Sprout Tower because I want to be level 10 by the time I face the guy with the, the Spiro. Uh, I'm not feeling confident against it. I think of anything on the channel, the, uh, the overlay is the thing I think about the most. I've definitely put the most time into it. Like another thing that I've been doing behind the scenes is you you will notice that sometimes like I'm on my I'm on my streams and then like last night and just everything is broken and nothing is working and we're trying to like bug fix in real time despite the fact that for every stream I show up an hour early to like set all the software up and test things and then it all works and then I like press go live and then everything breaks um so to minimize the amount of stuff that breaks I have written a Python script that will go through, look at everything that Gamehook is reporting, record all of the things that it's reporting, then I'll take a save state, and then we put that into Gamehook. Every time we make an update to Gamehook, it will run uh, these integration tests and determine if it is properly calculating every single property from that static piece of data that I took in the moment, it will recalculate all the properties and go, yes, this is all 100% correct. Um, so yeah, I wrote um, several, I, probably thousand lines of integrate integration tests with this script earlier this morning, just so that when we make changes, they don't break the overlay for myself, but also for other users, because there are other people that use the software um, game hook specifically. Oh, I don't have very many tackles. I'm gonna have to win this with. Oh, well, let's just do this. Yeah, knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. <laughs> um, Supersonic's real bad, by the way. Um, it has 55% accuracy. But I'm getting lucky with it. All right, we got one. Um, we gotta get another one. I could just reset here. It would be faster, but I am going to do another run today. So we'll just, we'll play it out. It'll make me feel better about the second run when I have a good time. <laughs> go to, go get confused. Get confused. Come on. I need the tackle for the hoot hoot. Stop this. Stop this. This is painful. You don't have any PP restoring items, so I would have had to escape rope out. And I really didn't want to escape rope out and leave this experience. Because I don't want to come back in here. That's going to take forever. Come on. Come on. Come on, confusion. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think I lose anyways. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, that's unfortunate. Okay, well, I guess we're... Um, no. No two resets there because I'm sloppy uh, we're going to escape robot yeah gamehook is open source you can go and check it out if you're curious how it works yeah honestly Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Interesting. Um, honestly, the reason that I haven't hired a developer for the overlay before this is because it does actually feel like my baby. I've been working on it for two years, like night and day, and putting a lot of care into it. And it's like just 
really hard to to just outsource that work to someone else. But the the reality of the reality of the situation is that when I first realized when I first actually like a long time ago I watched a sports broadcast and I was like looking at how they were managing data and displays and everything like showing lines on the field and like arrows and graphics like showing stats of players and stuff like that I was like I need to do that in real time with Pokemon and I want the quality of a live stream to be comparable to the quality of a fully produced video um, we explored a lot of avenues uh, me and Greg a long time ago to try and make that happen but it just wasn't possible at the time then once I discovered Gamehook I realized that it was possible, just a lot of work needed to be done. So I'm going to lose here because I'm bad and I didn't equip a berry. But also, it would have been nice to be 13 before that fight. I don't know if the berry's going to do it, honestly. I should probably just go beat the sage and get level 13. The worst early game of all time. Oh my gosh. Also, but that is to be expected. Uh, Venomoth is quite bad until it gets confusion at 17. Because its best stat is its special attack, and it has like it has no special moves right now. Anyways, the the like thing for me is like if something doesn't exist that I want to do, I'm I'm just gonna make it happen. Like it, if it takes me four years to get to that goal, I I will I will do it. Um, it's not impossible. It's just it doesn't exist yet, and we're gonna make it exist. So. It's coming, but I've realized that with my current base for the software, I, I will not be able to achieve my goal with the current the current code base. So the code base needs to be rewritten in order for me to achieve the final vision that I originally had. And it's been frustrating over the last year because if you go back and look at my um, the Venomoth video from last year, it actually looks very similar to what we're seeing right now. There's a few minor details, like the speed stat is in a different position, and there's a few styling choices that are different, plus I have accuracy on the screen now, which I didn't then. But other than that, there isn't really a lot that's different. I should actually probably use Disable here to get rid of Gust. Because what's it going to do after that? Tackle? Yeah. Oh no! I hate this thing. Okay, we just barely did it. Okay, 13, I think. I think 13 for Faulkner is probably the safest. Gligar fans rejoice. Can't, Venomoth can't learn Mud Slap. All is right with the world today. Yeah, we found a second ground type that can't learn Mud Slap. Exactly. Uh, during this run, I'm going to talk about some changes that I will be making for my Generation 2 runs going forward, because usually um, once a year, I would say, I, I like to make changes to I like to make changes to the way I'm doing things in order to keep my methodology as up-to-date as possible. I when I initially started the channel, I was obviously inspired by people like J Rose and Madrybred. Madrybred's approach was always, can I beat this game with this Pokemon? And then J Rose's approach was always, can you beat this game with this Pokemon? Um, that implies some degree of. The first one degrees. Uh, the fir first one implies a lot of personal experience, more personal experience, and the second one uh, implies more uh, objective data. I definitely come down more on the side of objective data, but there's one thing about J. Rose's videos that I never felt right, like, it never felt right to me to replicate it, which is the fact that the methodology has stayed the same. Oh no, I'm going to lose again. I guess Supersonic could save me, but no, I'm just going to take the blackout this time. That is something I will be changing with these. So I will be taking blackouts now and they won't be counted towards resets. It'll be a separate metric that will be counted independent of resets. Because blackouts are different. Um, and so like, like his approach has always stayed very fixed. And I, for a long time, I was like, I, I need to get to that place where like, I feel like my approach is fixed. Like that seems like the best possible thing to do is just 
get to the point where I'm no longer needing to change things. And then I feel like, yes, this is the right approach. But what I've learned is that it's more about the journey for me. And uh, I'm going to constantly be tweaking things until I get to the place where I feel really like this is the right place. And I don't know when I'm going to get there, especially with crystal version. Crystal version feels very hard to, to get right. All right, just outside of the Pokemon Center, just north, Frida shows up here on Fridays. I'm going to talk to her and get the Poison Barb, which will be useful in a little bit, but not right now. Why not just count unintentional losses? Okay, so... We have to... There is, like, always in the data, there is always a certain amount of, like, convenience, and then there is always a certain amount of, like, transparency. So, if I count unintentional losses, more of my own personal read on the situation comes into play. I'm not sure if I like that. I prefer if it's just objective, this is what happened, I had five resets and three blackouts. There was no me deciding this blackout is a valid unintentional blackout. This blackout was one that I didn't intend to have. Um, I also value transparency. And so it, to me, it feels a little bit weird to go like, well, there were five unintentional blackouts and there were like four and there was uh, six in total, but one of them was intentional. Like I need to uh, describe that in some way. And so that metric, I think, can be broken down, but the default for the metric should be to just track every single blackout. Uh, not to mention, from a design perspective behind the scenes, tracking every single blackout is so much easier than having some kind of flag that has to be set or cleared to track only the blackouts that I want to track. Or do I have to like manually input some kind of action? Uh, if you didn't know, I have ADHD. I'm extremely forgetful. I am going to forget to press that button and we're eventually going to get bad data due to human error. And to me, that just doesn't feel... Um, to me, that doesn't feel acceptable. Like, if it's, it's okay for me to make errors. Like, I'm not against myself making errors. When I make errors, I try and draw attention to them in the videos and explain them and then... Um, Everyone can judge my performance um, within the context of the errors that I have made. That seems like the most fair and transparent thing that I can do. Uh, it doesn't feel good to me if I don't put in place checks and balances that compensate for the errors that I make. So what I'm saying is, like, for instance, two years ago, whenever we showed current stats on screen, either myself or Sean would go into Photoshop and would draw those graphics and then put the graphic on screen at the time that we needed those stats. Okay, so I'm going to learn Supersonic. I'm going to put it in the place of Disable because that move is trash. I know you can technically use it on Fury Cutter, but like, no. <laughs> no. I refuse. We'll be fine without it. Um... Anyways, I, I we used to literally like draw every one of those graphics and then put it on screen. Um, so we had to choose very meticulously when we would create which like stats we would put on screen. And occasionally there were errors. Like I think in my Piloswine video, someone mentioned that the HP stat is 1.2 high most of the time, uh, which is a very obvious thing to catch because you can see the HP in game and you can um, not see it on the overlay. The reason that that mistake occurred is because we were using PK hex to open the save file. I was literally creating a save file in front of every gym leader. We would open the save file in PK hex, take the stats from there, add the badge boosts in mathematically with a calculator. Then we would input that into the Photoshop graphic, export it, put it on the screen, crop it and position it correctly add an animation and then that part of the video was done this was before game hook so um thank you flame sage <laughs> for taking this work away it was awful it took forever and we only got stats from the beginning of the fight throughout the entire fight plus there were some errors that crept in so for me it's like it doesn't seem it, it seems like i have failed doing my job correctly if a viewer shows up to my video and they receive misinformation uh, I don't. Tr I try not to be too hard on myself when misinformation does slip in because I'm human 
and it's really hard to catch errors. Like I go through every video, usually three times through the entire video to check for stuff. I'm checking as much as is possible and still doing that errors creep through. Like I say the wrong word or I say the wrong stat. I misspeak, say the wrong Pokemon name. Okay, so we're going to do Bugsy. I'll come back to this point after. Um, we knock out the Metapod. Confusion one hits the Kakuna. And then Scyther is going to be a four hit. But Fury Cutter does so little because I'm a poison type. So we're okay. Again, weird interaction if you're used to Generation 1. Level 20. I will guess I'll teach... Nah, I don't need Poison Powder. It's trash. I'm never going to use it. Um... So, like, there are the advantages that, um, the advantages, actually, I'm going to talk about the rival. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to talk about automation in a second, but for now, we're going to talk about the rival. Ghastly, hopefully, is going to be a one-hit with Confusion. Oh, withdrew. Interesting. We saw it again. I talked about this on another stream earlier in the month. Ha, <laughs> cool. I was not going to do anything, though. Confusion is good. The status condition. Also, the move, like, it's, it's very confusing. I know, um... At least we have the same type attack bonus. That's not confusing. Okay. Forest. Repel. Oh, no. Don't, don't talk to this guy. Don't talk to him. You waste a lot of time. Don't talk to him. You don't need to talk to him. See, that's the thing. Like, you can talk to him if you're curious, but you don't have to. The game doesn't force you to. In Fire Red, uh, in uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, he, he is forced to talk to you. I don't like that design choice. If you just move a little bit there, the repel wears off, and then you can use both cut, flash, oh uh, yeah, and a repel at the same time. So now I have to run out of repels because I need an oddish. I forgot I didn't get a bell sprout. Okay, here we go. Oddish. Uh probably can't do anything to it, so let's just throw Pokeballs. It, its catch rate's kind of annoying. It's easier to catch the bell sprout, I'm pretty sure. It feels that way to me when I play. Not like the Oddish is at a higher level. It's level 5 because this is Johto. Why would there be a Pokemon in like after the second gym above level 5? That wouldn't make sense. There we go. Caught it. Because uh, this runs so bad anyways. We're going to call this one um, Kiko. Thanks for hanging out in chat. It's great to have you here. My spelling's always, always been really terrible. I'm sorry if I spelt it wrong even though I was looking at it in chat. All right, there we go. Okay, so what I was talking about is automation. And I, I do want to come back to that point and finish it. So this idea of putting the stats, these bespoke stats that we were making for every single video. Put, oh, I can't learn headbutt. I'll sell that later. Um, these bespoke stats that we were putting on screen, that's just automatic. You want to go over there and get headbutt in most runs, but not in this one. Putting these bespoke pieces of graphic on screen was making the video's quality higher, I would say. I don't think that it was like, yeah, it was it was a good choice. Like if I went back and did this again, I would definitely choose to do that. But doing it by hand every time allows so much more human error to come in. So there's a choice. Either you slow down because you believe that the human error is unacceptable, which is what I believe. Um, or you automate it. Those are the only two choices. The only other thing is that you don't care about mistakes. You don't care about quality. All you care about is production rate and money. And in that case, um, okay, great. Um, I guess this is not art for you and that's okay. I'm sure that if I told people I make Pokemon videos and I consider it art, they'd be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's not really art, but it, I kind of, uh, I treat my approach to this process like it is art. Um, I think what I do is more in the realm of sports broadcast when compared with like art or, uh, movie making. I think it's more towards sports broadcast. Anyways, I, since I think it's unacceptable to have errors sneak in and stuff like that, the, the only approach is either slow down and I didn't want to slow down. Also, my channel is fairly small. If, if I slow down, I can't do this full time and then the quality will plummet anyways. But if I keep doing this full time, then I need to find another way. So for me, there was only one choice, which was automate the process. If I automate the process, then as long as the software is correct, everything will be always accurate and there will be no problems with misinformation. And so 
that brought us to game hook and my initial initial idea with it was just can we get the stats on screen uh all the time okay here watch this open the menu so you see where he is close it then move new trick that i learned I'm really proud of that one because I didn't watch anything. I was just playing one day and then I was like, hey, I can do this. I can open the menu. It's not technically a bag trick. All you're doing is freezing his position so you can see where he is. And then you close the menu and you can time out the passing motion more easily. Uh, we can't get anything from the, four, uh, the what's it called, National Park. So we'll just go back here. Hi, Scott. How's the... Uh, dragon type doing it's, it's okay it's okay the, the early game for this thing is really rough we got to get through the early game before it starts to gain gain speed i've programmatically removed spinners from generation two and generation three we currently do not have the ability to remove them from generation four but hopefully that'll come at some point and there are no spinners in gen one I'm not liking this. I don't like this. <laughs> I will try it, but I don't think it's going to go well. <sighs> Maybe we have to supersonic the mill tank. Maybe disable. I don't, I don't want to be using disable or, or, or supersonic, honestly. I don't want to be using either of these. Oh, no. Wow. Did it... It just... Mirror moved. Yeah, we got a supersonic. We got to get it to miss. There we go. Combo broke. Yeah! Yeah! <gasps> Didn't deserve that at all. We gotta come back and we gotta figure this fight out. This is... That was not how you do it. Yeah, mirror move confusion, then it mimicked confusion. Could have been terrifying. I'm a poison type after all. That deserves a like. Thank you, Whitney, for earning me a like. Yeah, so automation is really the choice between... No, I went too soon. Ah, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. This guy's terrifying. Okay, I crit. Well, all right, fine. Fine. Ah, Walt's good. He's good. Oh, well, he's good experience as well. So just fighting him is not, not the worst thing if you actually win. Whoa. Okay, the low kick is not as bad. What was that exceptional? In Gen 2 default, can't the spinners rotate something like multiple times per second? Uh the Gen 2 spinners are honestly random, I think. They they just like they just go crazy. They're just like spinning around doing wild stuff, but I'm pretty sure there's no way to anticipate if you can get by them or not. Yeah, that's true about the bag. In Gen 3, the spinners always catch you if you try to run by them. You have to walk by them or bike by them. They're literally programmed to get you if you, if you try and... Uh, Try and run by. But in Gen 3, uh, there is a, there's a bag glitch that you can do to consistently get by the spinners. For me, um, because of the fact that I play on 4 times speed, the bag trick's kind of hard. It's not that bad. I can do it. Um, it's, it's just not great. Um, since they're optional, it, I think it just makes sense to turn them off. Like, there is no case where it feels fair when comparing results to have a trainer that is skippable catch you in one run and not catch you in the other run. Like, okay. It's like, the solution to that is either play 500 runs and then compare the average time or the best time or compare all those things and then report it or play one or two runs with as much of the, like, overworld RNG that is not related to the Pokemon just completely nullified. So that's what I do. Because I, I already work on the channel a lot, like pretty much every waking hour, seven days a week. So it's not like I can just like, oh, I'll just do more runs. It'll be okay. We don't need to turn off the spinners. Yeah, 
in Gen 4, the way the spinners work is like they they turn their direction is based on where your character is positioned and the direction your character is moving. It's quite strange compared to all of the other generations. Um, I should have done something else, but for this run, we'll do the old approach, which is catching Krabby. I'm going to be catching Psyduck now, but not in the forest. Uh, uh, Psyduck in the forest is too rare. I don't think that that's a reliable strategy. And I want a strategy that feels reliable. Krabby. It's decent. Now I just have to grab the Dratini. The Dratini. This thing has a lot of special defense. I could just turn the spinners off for the second run only. I could. There's like, okay, so like, I've thought a lot about that. Like, do we turn, oh, it's so annoying when this happens. Wow, Krabby, you're huge. Um, I thought about a lot about that. And the more I think about it, the more I want the first run to be directly comparable. Stop. The more I want the first run to be directly comparable. Stop. So annoying, this guy's team. But yeah, I think I want the first run to be more comparable to the second run. No. I wanted to go one, one step over more. <laughs> Enough to distractions need to get to work. Okay. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, we're going to fight Dennis, of course. Mandatory trainer in my runs. Fusion's getting really old. Getting really old. Having to use this move. When do I get Psybeam? 36. Ugh. So, uh, Hidden Power is gonna... Hidden Power is gonna really come through. Yeah, Dennis is still around. Oh. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen the video where it's like, can you beat Fire Red without looking at the game? Those are cool. I don't know how this is going to go. Uh, that was the longest bonk, I agree. Not great. Nah, really not great, actually. Um, I'm in a bad position here. I think I'm dead. I'm dead. Bye bye. Gen 2 bonk counter win when the refactor is done. Probably months. Honestly. Like, not for a while. I wish I could, like, be like, oh, it's going to come really soon, but, like, I just can't spend time on it right now. This guy's good experience. Oh yeah, I want to do a quiver dance run so badly. Run twenty one twenty seven. Thanks for the four ninety nine. Really appreciate it. Oh, let's fight all these people. We, we I came over here for experience, anyways. Like the intent here is to train. Yeah, so like, if I had to sum up the reason why the overlay hasn't made much progress over the last year, or why I am like, when someone asks me like, hey, would you implement this? Like, the answer is not, I don't want to, or I'm resistant to the idea of changing things. The idea, the, the answer is literally like, I do not have enough time to edit, review, improve the software, and play all the runs in my daily schedule. Like, it's, it's just like, there is no more time. So, uh, and that's largely because edit, like uh, updating the software has become such a, a bloated process.
Um, uh, granted, I, I should mention that I am not a perfect human by any means, and I, there's definitely a lot of things that I'm doing that are not efficient in terms of how I'm approaching them. So there's probably bloat that I could cut out of my schedule that would improve my production rate on certain things that we could consider to be um, very important. If I sit down though and I really um, take a like a hardcore business approach to the channel and look at things and ask, what are the things that matter most? Uh, the answer is never the overlay. Like the overlay is good enough now that I could just produce videos and not have to change anything. That's really artistically unsatisfying for me. And I'm sure that you would eventually get bored um, if it just stayed the same for like five years. Because we wanna, we wanna be going places. Let's go places. Instead of just sit somewhere and do nothing. But, um, and that might not, uh, I might be wrong on that though. It, it might be the case that like it shows everything we need and and we're good. We don't need to make many many changes and uh, that's that. Uh, because of that, I think it's it, it's like making progress on the overlay is not always the most important thing. So. Like something that I've lost that I actually do think is important that I haven't been treating like it's important is uh, reading comments. Normally, like a year ago, I was trying to read every single comment. But then last January, I realized that it was not possible for me to read them because I spent all of January trying to catch up to the comments that I had received in December and I literally could not catch up. By the time it was March, I had still not got through all the December comments. And by that time, I realized like, all right, so I don't think I can read every comment anymore. Uh, that being said, I would really like to read a lot more comments, and that time has to come from somewhere. So if you support me directly through Patreon or through YouTube memberships, I truly do appreciate it because you're allowing me to hire someone to take my time, put my time back where it really matters, and take it away from things like trying to refactor the overlay, which I'm pretty slow at anyways. Okay. Oh, I one shot the hunter. Well, that's good. Come on, Quilava. Come on. Yeah, missed two smoke screens. Perfect. Easy. Uh, so obviously, confusion is not very good against the Magnemite, but like, what else do I have? Higher comment reader. Well, I have hired Soul to be in the chat of all of my streams and to moderate my discords. So, Soul is here today. Um, I, I did think about hiring someone to read comments and like my idea around it was like the problem with hiring someone to read comments is that you're not receiving the information. Like someone else is receiving the information then through them it is filtered to you. So I was like, I had to think of like, how would someone read comments on behalf of me? Would they like, like what's the approach they're going to take? Like they compile them all into categories and then try and like, communicate the kind of general gist of how people are feeling about things or do they try to like I, I don't know it's tricky right and like in the in the end in the end like the the answer really is just clone myself like so much of this stuff is just easier if I clone myself I, I don't know if walking on these black tiles would be easier if I cloned myself I'd probably fall down two more times to be frank Oh, I didn't save. I didn't save or equip the mint berry. I'm not thinking. I think we'll be fine, but... It's going to go very wrong if the Gengar hits Hypnosis and uses Dream Eater. No! I'm going to take the black out if I black out. I'm going to black out. Ah, look at that. Look at that Oddish. It's huge. See, that's another thing about the overlay. When I faint, my solo Pokemon should stay there with all of its stats just fainted. And uh, we should not see anything for my HM users while I, while I knock them out. When I first put this together, I thought, oh, it's so fancy. Look at that. You see that dynamic changes. It looks great. And like, no, 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 this is not actually good. It looks so cluttered and awful. Okay, here we go. 
I'm thinking so much about the behind the scenes. By the way, I love the behind the scenes. It's so much fun. There's so much awesome stuff going on. Um, really exciting things that are going to make a huge difference in the future. Okay, this will be fine now because if it puts me to sleep, I just mint berry and then it's, it's okay. Yeah, like um, someone actually commented on one of my previous streams that was like, you mentioned AI, I can't watch this anymore. It's like, okay, like um, AI is like, AI in my opinion, like is really overhyped for doing certain tasks, like writing things. Um, honestly, if you ask it to write a poem or something, it's really bad at it. Like, I, I can't believe that someone would think that it's good at it. It's like, it can do it and it can write a poem that sounds like, I don't know, like um, a YouTube video from like the 2001 era when like quality didn't matter. You're just like trying to put something funny on the internet or something in like roughly the style of this poet. But like you ask it to write a poem in the style of someone, like a well-known poet, a poet like C.S. Lewis or something, and then just like, I think C.S. Lewis. Am I forgetting? My brain just like, scrambles that kind of stuff names names are very hard for me anyways like if you give it like edgar Allan poe write a thing in the style of edgar Allan poe it's gonna like completely fail it's just gonna be garbage uh, what ai is really good at doing is it's really good at diagnosing code bugs and uh problems with programmatic language because it's all rule-based and all the documentation online is so good that like before when i started programming literally two years ago um, if I had a problem with my code, I would have to go to Google and search it and then read all the documentation and then look back at my code and try and figure out what was going wrong. Now I just give the error message in the code to AI and it will be like, oh yeah, your syntax is wrong over here. Um, I learn faster because I'm able to deduce the mistake quicker. And when I know what the mistake is, um, then that sinks in as a piece of learning. It's like, okay, so like, the mistake is this syntax. I need to avoid that syntax in the future, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. And uh, I think there's a obvious disclaimer here, but I think some people will probably need to hear it. And that's the fact that if you're very new to something and you're using AI to learn, it's probably not going to be an effective learning tool because you do need to build some degree of basic competency before the tool will be able to be utilized in an intelligent way. So, yeah, that's just like, I think that's important to note. I saw that all the time with like music. It's like people just like utilizing crutches, like uh, tuners and stuff. And it's just like, if you always do that and you never start out and learn the other way, like it's going to be really hard the entire time. Okay, Polyrath, please don't ruin my day. Mind reader? Hypnosis? Oh, I confused it! It hit itself. All right. Easy. Also, um, in general, like if if you ask me about AI, like, do I like it? Do I not like it? It certainly made my programming easier. It's a good tool, but there's also a ton of ethical problems with it. Um, and and for me at least, like, what the the major one that I I really like um, have a lot of like personal experience with, just because I was a musician, is like this idea that um, AI can just like freely take art that exists on the internet and then use it as training data. That, to me, does not seem okay. That would be okay if revenue produced by the AI was, like, given to the artists, because then you've helped train the system. But, I don't know, that, that one's a bit sketchy. I, I know that that argument could also be made for things like um, documentation for AI, like a coding source and stuff like that, so... It's a little bit tricky. I think I, I I think I draw the line at art specifically because it's usually the case that artists are not paid very well for what they do. Uh, and it's really unfortunate seeing a group of people who genuinely make uh, everyone's life far more rich 
seeing them um, be exploited in some way by a system bothers me. Like, I think that, I, I don't know, like, I think artists are really important. And like, like, um, back in like 2020, when I started the channel, like, we, I think the world was noticing that more and more than ever, because if you're stuck at home and you can't do anything, like, you need something beautiful or something entertaining to put on to pass the time. That's like, that's so, so key just to like the human condition. I just hope that people don't forget the value that art has and entertainment. Okay, finally Psybeam. <laughs> Psychic is, at least we learn it by level up, but the only place that Psychic is available as a TM is Saffron City. So you have to beat the League to get it, which always feels a little bit off. And it's, it's a little bit weird how late Psychic comes in most of these runs. Like, I don't know. Yeah, art and, art and sports are both similar, where it's just like... Like, the people at the top make a lot of money, they do really well, and then the people at the bottom are, like, just not making it by. They gotta work at McDonald's. You can't get Sludge Bomb until you defeat all the Rockets, so I have to defeat the Rockets to do that. Yeah, AI, the AI hands are real weird. Anyways, that's my thought on AI. Um, I'm curious to see where it will go. Um, I, I'm like an eternal optimist. I hope that you uh, get that sense from my channel. I try to stay positive about things and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I, I like to keep these videos as, yeah, as like positive as possible. And like, I hope that I can make people's lives better in some small, tiny way by playing Pokemon and making terrible mistakes while I do it. Like not giving a mint berry before Morty. Um, so that being said, like I, I hope that AI is going to be a thing that makes the world a better place. But usually with tools and technology that make the world a better place, there is also the ability for those things to be misused and to cause harm. But right now, I'm trying to be as optimistic as possible and go like, I'm hoping that this is going to end up in a good place. Oh, I almost spammed A through that. Whew. Oh, okay. Um, a little while ago, these Voltorbs were, or the Electrodes were actually problematic. <laughs> I'm gonna heal before taking them on, just in case. But I don't think it. It'll, I don't think it'll be what happens today. If they, if you had to fight them one after another and you couldn't heal, like getting hit by, like in, if they were all in one battle, let's say, um, then getting hit by Screech from one of them would be devastating because then the next one self destructs. Yikes! All right. Oh, also, just like to wrap up the point on AI, because this is another thing about live streaming and just making videos in general. Like, sometimes you say stuff and then you think back on it and you're like, I didn't really say all the things that I should have said. Like, there were a few things that I, I should have gone back and, like, touched on because um, the topic deserves it. So I think one of the things for me is just, like, I'm not an expert in this field. I have no idea. So all this stuff could go... A totally different direction and and yeah like i'm not an expert so my opinion is just my opinion but that that's it it's literally just a guy that makes pokemon videos talking about a tool that exists so definitely um definitely not an expert and i i don't claim to be okay let's fight price 
Scott is an AI. I definitely think that my tone communicates that I am an AI at, at some points, yes. Okay, so we'll knock out the seal. Hopefully the dugong. Two hits for the dugong. Pile of swine. It's an ice ground type. Kind of annoying. Uh, I think Psybeam's going to do more, maybe. Maybe Sludge Bomb. I don't know. This one's hard to get a sense for. I think Psybeam was doing slightly more. The Hyper Potion's annoying, but this Pile of Swine is pretty bad. Blizzard did almost nothing. Ah. So Jasmine. Uh oh. Uh oh. I think we might have to train. Do I do like preemptive training? Uh oh, Jasmine. This could be bad. Like I do not have anything good against her. Sludge bomb is like my like yay I got it move and it's it's not useful at all. Um. Oh, I'll talk about Pal World also. Um, I feel like that's a good uh, AI is a good segue to talk about Pal World. <laughs> um, okay, like, mm, let's see. Um, oh yeah, we need a router update because it changed the name of the paralyzed Cureberry, so it's accurate. Uh think we gotta train we gotta train that iron tail is doing way too much and i'm not doing enough i i have got good confusion luck i think but Oof. let's fight people at sea and i'll talk about power world i have not played power world that's how i'll start it i have no intention to play power world to me um it's not that interesting. Um, it seems like it's a big, like everyone's like, whoa, this looks really cool. It's new. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I hope that people are enjoying it. I, I don't like want to comment and say if it's like a bad game or a good game or anything. I don't know. Um, but, you know, there's like, I talked about this on a former stream in the month. There is a difference between inspiration and imitation, I think. And sometimes imitation or inspiration starts at imitation and then becomes inspiration where it like leads to something new. Uh, if you can track artists, that's generally what happens. Like a good example is Stravinsky. You look at his earlier earlier musical works and it's like, wow, looks a lot like the late romantic composers that um, he was learning from at the time. And then you look at his later works and it's like, wow, he really went somewhere totally different with the skills that he learned from imitating those other people. Uh Yeah, I, I think for me, it gives a little bit of the vibe of like, this feels like just kind of like a cheap, Im like maybe not cheap, but like an imitation. And because of that, I'm, I like don't look at it and go like, whoa, that like really inspires me. Like I find that like, it tends to be the case that like the imitative product is just not as interesting as the initial product. Yeah, I don't know how cheap, like, I, I don't know what the budget for the game was or anything like that, but. Yeah. I do think that there's, like, probably, um. Like, it, it seems like there's a lot of people that would be excited to have another, like, monster collecting game similar to Pokemon around. My Torchic is named Stravinsky. Nice. Um, I don't know how far I take this training, honestly. Like, there's only a few more trainers out here. I think I'm just going to waste time fighting them. I guess I'll fight the people along this route.
There is noise in your stream. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to fix it now. I apologize. Is everyone hearing the noise or is it only one person? And what does the noise sound like? Once things have started up, it's basically impossible for me to update settings. So I hear a large dog. Windows error sound. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Venomoth. There is no other way. We are having, we are having technical issues. Okay. The rooting software is broken. I cannot hear what the sound on my computer while I'm streaming because it distracts me. So I put headphones in and I take them off. But the router is basically like throwing an error constantly and uh, I just kept seeing it pop up but it's just like, well, I'm not going to deal with it. I'll deal with it when the run's done. <laughs> okay, I'll deal with it now. So it should be gone now. And... Apparently we're having other tech problems now. Music as well? I don't know what that means. <laughs> stream until technical issues happen. Now is a stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not one of my streams until one happens. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> Just a second. <sighs> okay, we're good. Um, yeah, Scott.exe was rebooting. Sorry about that. Okay, he's back now. Ready to wow you with all his in-depth Pokemon knowledge. No! Chad gave me his number. I don't want your number, Chad. <sighs> I do not have a stream deck. I literally can't push buttons, though. Like, I cannot take my hand off my controller while I play. <laughs> oh, this guy's a Magikarp guy. Uh I think it'll still be enough to get 42. Hmm. No, it's not going to be. Look at how little experience each one of these gives. Do I need to make art? No! <sighs> okay, that's one Chad phone call. You know, I did think right now, I, I did have the thought, what if I remove Chad from the phone book so that he doesn't call me ever again? And yes, that might be the smartest thing to do. But I think we need to leave chat, uh, leave Chad and see how many times he calls me. Oh my gosh, two times already. Okay, we had two Chad calls. Two Chad calls. Um, I think my content is starting to go in a slightly different direction now where we're talking about Chad on, on stream. Okay, here we go. Jasmine, sleep powder. This is going to be my answer. Let's go. I just put her Pokemon to sleep and then knock them out slowly. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Keep telling yourself that. It's going to be fine even when the defense gets lowered by the Steelix's Iron Tail. It's going to be fine. Don't worry. Chad's going to call right after this fight. Just to slow me down. Okay, we got the... No, she's going to full restore? Yeah, Hyper Potion. Hyper Potion. It's a Hyper Potion. Oh, this takes so long. No, no. Okay. Whew. Well, that's frustrating. ND Redox, thank you for the two euros. Come on, let's go. <laughs> it survived? 
Wow. I actually, when I when I planned to do this one, I was like, this run, it's going to be easy. Like, Venomoth will be so much better than starting as a Venonat. Probably going to be like an hour and like 25 minutes, something like that. I don't know about that now. Uh, we're like approaching an hour, and I have played terribly in this run, but uh, Venomoth is not doing so well. That being said, we can potentially get hidden power to solve this fight if this fight is so asymmetrically awful. Ground may help a lot. If I drop $50, can we get Chad art? Ah, uh, I think Soul's prices are more expensive than that, unfortunately. Nah, that's the third call, but we might have to... A oh, fourth call! I was outside, then I went inside, he called me again. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, we need a Chad counter. That's really what we need. <laughs> Maybe I should spend the time to to make a Chad counter between these runs. <laughs> nah. Come on. Wait, Soul does art? Yeah, Soul does the channel trainer art and stuff like that. And then Brian does all the thumbnails. And my wife is neither of those people. My wife is my wife is honestly not involved in the channel at all. She has her own job. She does her thing. Um, she's like support, emotional support, and she talks to me about it. But like, she's not actively doing any work. Magnemites, magnemites are problematic. So we need something that stops magnemites. Like hidden power ground is probably the first go to. It might make the early game a little bit more hellish because your uh, attack and HP DV are lower, but. It might make this a little bit more livable, which will save overall time. Um, I don't really like water or ground because they make your HP DV so bad. Uh, sorry, water or fire. Um, it would be nice to use... like That's usually why I default to ice, because it's like, pretty good throughout the mid game. It's quite good during the league. Like It's good against Will. It's also good against Koga. It's also good against Bruno. It's also decent against Karen and really good against Lance. And then good against Erica. Like, Ice is just amazing. I, that's why Ice is the best. And it doesn't ruin your HP DV, and you only lose two points in your defense. Ice is overall the best. Would I ever let my wife do it? Well, I would... I, it doesn't come down to, like, letting my wife do the run. Like, she can do the run if... Uh, she can do the run if she wants. But um, I would never force her to do a run. If she wanted to do one, that would be that would be fun, definitely. Mm. Lance has the possibility of being an issue. Magnum might resists ice, though. The only two types it doesn't resist. Oh, I was going to go and save. I was pushing down twice to get to the save menu, but instead I got to petrol. <laughs> you don't have to force her. Just poke her until she agrees. No, that's called coercion. Yeah, the description link for Soul's art is the Twitter link to Serena Vale. Ah, pop, 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 pop. Yeah, no, another Chad call. What's that? Number five, I think. Five calls from Chad. You know, it's kind of nice to explore the telephone mechanic in this game because I'm usually so blissfully unaware of it. Whereas in Pokemon Emerald, they force you to take their phone numbers. It's very annoying. Um, I think I'll burn the elixir now. That's what I was waiting on. I'm going to keep the paralyzed cure berry in case things go wrong against the magnemite here. Sweet. Definitely don't sludge bomb the magnemite. 
Thunderwave. That's why I had the Paralyzed Cure Berry. Okay, no problems. I gotta redo Sneasel soon. Uh, I've been thinking about that one for a while. Oh yeah, in case anyone wasn't following all my posts over on, on X, uh, I uh, my furnace broke down, so it was really cold, because I live in Canada. So we had no heat for one night and then a morning. But luckily, the furnace is all repaired now, so... Heat has been restored. Is Schoolboy Schoolboy's Chad's Pokemon is a Mr. Mime? It's kind of funny. I feel like Mr. Mime is the least Chadliest, least Chadly Pokemon out there. It's like when I think of the word Chad, does the word mime come to mind? And the answer is no. <laughs> uh, set up a Bitcoin farming rig. Don't need a heater. Yeah, honestly, um. I just stayed in my office because it's so warm in here. My computer is already very warm. It puts off so much heat. Uh, it's actually very problematic, uh, even in the winter, because it gets so warm at like the peak time of day. Uh, that's true. You're convincing me now. Mr. Mime is sort of a chat in Generation 1. Okay, here we go. Um, da, 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 da. That dialogue is very long. <laughs> he has a lot to say. So we can't learn any... Um, we can't learn any tutors, so it doesn't make sense to save money. We can just buy vitamins now. When you want to learn tutor moves, it doesn't always make sense to to buy vitamins here because uh, I have enough for two more. I think maybe Carbos. Just I want to be I want to be a hundred percent sure. Like if I got outspeed the Reds Charizard and Reds Espeon, I would be very happy. Huh. There we go. Chat again. Six, I think. Seven. Apparently he likes to call me when I'm in the Goldenrod Pokemon Center. Eight. <laughs> wow. Does Chad trigger any... Someone needs to go on, uh, like, a Bulbapedia and, uh, look up... Look up, um... I know that I can I, I know that I can delete it, but I'm not going to. I refuse to. I wanna see how many times Chad calls me. Yeah. We gotta see. No. She used Swift. Yeah, you, you a dirty dog. If you wanna, if you wanna leave a super chat to get the, uh, for me to commission the uh, Chad, the the Chad graphic that we can do that. <laughs> um. Wait, does your software mess with the in-game clock? Yes, it does. It ensures that all of the uh, time of day events can occur that need to occur. What am I doing?
Do you like Scott? Do you like sorry, Mister Mister Scott? <laughs> do you like Star Wars? I've never heard you talk about it, but you strike me as the type. Um. Ah. Uh, how do I say this? So when I was a kid, my mom was like telling me about, she would always tell me about different media and stuff that she had watched. And she would like tell me the stories in like an age appropriate way, which was really nice because I was like five, right? So she didn't like go like, hey, you're going to watch Star Wars, blah, 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 blah. She just would instead go, Hey, there's this story and like Luke Skywalker, he's like a Jedi and he has like a laser sword and he fights the bad guys and learns from a cute little guy named Yoda. Like she'd tell me the story. Like she, she was a really good storyteller. Um, so thanks mom for passing on some degree of storytelling chops because I do use those in my day to day life now with the channel. Uh, but she'd tell me the story the stories and things like that. And so then it, at, at some point it became time for me to officially watch the real movies. I don't know. I was like seven or eight, something like that. Cause like, I think overall most of us can agree that the star Wars movies are made for kids. Like there's some stuff in there that's maybe not the most kid friendly, like, um, um, uh, Luke and, uh, Luke's, uh, aunt and uncle getting fried by the, uh, the empire. That's a little bit, that's a little bit much, I think. But overall, I think George Lucas intended the moves to, movies to be fairly friendly for kids. Watched the first one, obviously. Loved it. It was amazing. Life-changing. I couldn't get it out of my mind for the longest time. It was so good. Um, I have to say, uh, I was not actually disturbed by the aunt and uncle scene. It, it didn't really bother me that much as a kid. I was like, eh, that's fine. Um, so then my mom was like, all right, we should watch the second one. Somehow. I'm like, yeah, that's great. Sounds amazing. Let's do it. Um, we went to watch the second one. She put it on. I was so ready for this. Um, she had told me all about like, like the story, right? Of this. She told me like, uh, she only actually told me the story of the first one. And then, um, she told me the story of the second one going into it, but not all of the stuff at the end. So I got to the famous reveal moment. Darth Vader goes, I am your father. And like, I don't know why, but that shook me to my core as a small child. I turned to my mom immediately and just said, mommy, turn it off, turn it off. And I would not look back at the screen. Like the TV was on and I just stared at her. And she was just like, oh no, like something's really wrong. Like he's normally not like this. Like he should be engrossed in, in the Star Wars. But I was just staring at her being like, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. She turned it off. Uh, we went up, we went upstairs and uh, she got me some cereal. I remember it was shredded wheats. This is like a, this is like a deep traumatic memory of mine. Shredded wheats. Um, I ate my shredded wheats and I looked at them and my brain just kept going like, it, it can't be his father. It can't be. It can't be. Like, it, it can't be. That It's just, like, it's not supposed to work that way. Yeah, so then I didn't watch The uh, Return of the Jedi for, like, 10 years. I just refused to watch it until I was, like, 16. I was like, no, I'm not watching that. It was too traumatic. Like, I'm staying as far away from Star Wars as is possible. It wasn't actually that long. It was till I was, like, 12 or something, but it took me a long time. <sighs> Okay, we beat Claire. Poison poison bomb was enough. Sorry, poison? Is that? No, it's not poison bomb. What is it? It's sludge bomb. Oh, gosh, that, that is becoming a meme. Also, Dirty Dog, $100 donation. Thank you so much. We will definitely get Chad a piece of art. Chad art is the first art that we're going to get this year. I guess I'm going to have to fight Chad more in these runs. It's the only way. I don't fight him that much, so we have to, to root it in somehow. Oh, that's not good. Phantom Moth should not be using stab moves. <laughs> uh, do the Chad rematch? Yeah. 
Uh, when I finally did watch episode six, I loved it. But the re, uh, uh, so like, um, I told, <laughs> I told my mom, I told my mom, I was like, okay, so like, I'm not going to watch the next one because that was way too awful that Darth Vader is Luke's dad. Like, I don't want to think about that. Um, so I was like, mom, you have to tell me the story. And then she's like, do you want me to tell you the story? And I was like, yes. And then she's like, well, Yoda dies. And I was like, don't tell me the story. I don't want to know. <laughs> like, this is awful. This, this franchise, terrible. I never want to think about this ever again. The cute little green guy dies. And Darth Vader is Luke's father. That is too much. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's how I grew up with Star Wars. Um, honestly, when I, uh... I'm just like I think it was honestly good for me as a kid. Like it, it made me like deal with like some harsh realities. Like everything is not always sunshine and rainbows, and I had to like take some time and like cope with it. And then eventually I was like, I'm ready. And then I watched it and it was all fine. Uh, and yes, I, I I love Star Wars, but uh, I have to say I'm not a huge fan of the new Star Wars movies. Um, I, that's kind of like a very regular thing to say on the internet ever since The Last Jedi, so um, I don't really feel like I'm being original by contributing anything to that conversation, but yeah. Fallen Hero, you were right. It's Poison Bomb, yeah. Thank you for the $2. Really appreciate it. Yeah, now everyone who hasn't seen Star Wars is spoiled. Oh, apologies. I have to say though, um, the the whole franchise in general inspires me in a lot of ways with my own creative work, especially on the channel. So, on the stream yesterday, I was talking a little bit about my creative process and how I select. Oh, schoolboy Chad! Schoolboy Chad, was that like nine? I think that's nine. Oh, I got the master ball. I didn't want the master ball. I wanted this. <sighs> So yeah, um, I, I do actually think that Star Wars has had a big impact on me. Oh, let's go by Chad. It's 10, I think. 10, 10 Chads. 10 Chad calls. This is what happens when you get one of the trainer's phone numbers. Imagine playing this game, getting all of the phone numbers, the, like the maximum number for your phone book. Oh, be impossible to play this game. Uh, Just run down. No. Um, anyways, like, yeah, it, they, I think they've profoundly influenced me. I talked yesterday about my process for selecting which video is next, that sort of thing. And uh, originally, like, like the original trilogy is obviously fantastic. Uh, I grew up with the prequels, so I have a really soft spot in my heart for them. But, like, I, I know that there's, like, a lot wrong with those movies from, like, a technical craft perspective. Um, and there's a lot of innovation there on a technical perspective, so there's there's cool stuff. Chad rematch after red? Okay, I'll do it. I'll do the Chad rematch. Um, please, someone remind me though. I'm gonna forget. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do it. Uh, Sludge Sting. That's right. So uh, after the most recent movies came out, it really got me reflecting after watching a bunch of online analysis videos that are way too long that oh no actually not way too long there's no videos are too long that's my uh policy when it comes to content that's why you'll probably i don't know maybe you'll never see a short from me like a, an official youtube short i don't know if i'll do that kind of thing just because i like long form content a lot all right i really want 52 before the league but yeah after watching that i just like realized the I realized how important it is when making creative work to know where you're going. Like, where where does this all end? Like, what's the purpose of what I'm making right now? Does it build towards something? Or is it just, like, a part of something and all it ever will be is a part of something? Um, and I'm not considering, like, how that part fits into the whole. Oh, that's really annoying. I don't like that. As long as the cadaver is not too bad. It's going to go for Future Sight, yeah. Its other move is Psybeam, but it sees that Future Sight does more damage, so then it uses it. It's kind of hilarious. Okay, we'll get Psychic. There we go. Perfect. Oh, 11, 11 Chad calls. Okay. 
League time. Is that 12? I missed one. It's 12. Okay, sure. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for keeping track. Okay, you're you're now the Chad, uh, the Chad counter. So whenever we have a Chad call, we got to see it in chat, how many Chads it's been. 12 so far. 12 Chads in this stream. How many more will there be? I'm thinking, like, probably we'll get to 20. Seems like the number. Does Chad still get service when you're in Kanto? I don't know. Maybe. I hope so. Oh, we're good. So yeah, um, knowing where you're going is important. And because of that, uh, after really thinking about it, I sat down and realized that at the beginning of my series, I had just been kind of winging it. And like, like essentially the only metric that I set out for myself with the yellow series was the final episode is Mewtwo. That was like one of the very early on things that I decided, like within the first year of having the channel. I was like, the last video is going to be Mewtwo in the Yellow series. I know that's where we're headed. But then that doesn't really give good shape to the year throughout the year. So there needs to be uh, a little bit more thought put into things, in my opinion. And so now I try and sit down at the beginning of the year every January and I like plan out the entire year worth of content and how that year of content will impact future years of content so that we're not like getting to the final four episodes of uh, of the Yellow series and it's like, and now we have a Machop run and then we have a Machoke run and now to make a really great finale we have, I don't know, Star You. And you're like, really? You're gonna, you're gonna end the whole thing with Star You? Okay, so um, Bruno... Um, new trainer in Gen 2, of course. My psychic type, not having any problems here. Unless that Machamp Rockslide gets a critical hit. Okay, but we lived it. Lucky. And then we crit. All right. By the way, I'm faster than all of Lance's Pokemon, so the Aerodactyl will likely not get in a Rockslide in. Unless I don't one-hit it, which is, is, that is a possibility. I have seven rare candies, though. Yeah, let's see. Okay, here we go. Karen, I'm going to start talking about the gameplay at this point. Uh, Sludge Bomb's probably going to two-hit the Umbreon. Oh, I crit. Oh, but it didn't do that much. Not great. Okay, Sludge Bomb, Hound Doom, not enough. Flamethrower does more than half. Not good. Okay, I missed, so I've lost unless I crit. That's that. I think we rare candy here. I would like to have better ranges on the Hound Doom. That's all. Could you stop? <laughs> ah, sand attack's so annoying. Okay, Houndoom is gone. Vileplume, hopefully. Oh. Oh. Uh. I think I'm okay now, though. Unless it destiny bonds, but it... I don't know why it doesn't, like, I don't think it knows that it's moving first, so it doesn't really, like, get the sense that it should Destiny Bond, and it just goes for other stuff like Lick to do the most possible damage. I, I don't actually know why the AI decides to use Destiny Bond in that fight. Maybe Snowy knows. Snowy is very knowledgeable about this generation. I was like, did I just use that on Oddish? Kiko. Cool, but, like, not that cool. We gotta keep the max potion for Venomoth. Okay, Lance. Aerodactyl second. Sleep powder. Easy. Two hit with Psychic? Let's see. Yep. Nope. Never mind Rock Slide. Oh, it didn't even do half. I was expecting way more from it. Wow. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, well. Ah. Ben okay. I like this thing, but it's not great. Uh, go to sleep.
The AI mainly uses Destiny Bottom if it's low HP. Okay. I think I should probably just attack the Aerodactyl and take one hit from it, but I don't really want to do that because then the Charizard is going to come out and I want to be able to survive at least one of its hits. Mm. Like, Sludge Bomb right away is the correct choice on the Gyarados. I don't think I'm going to do more damage with Psychic. Oh, come on. No. Okay, well, we can still luck through this. It's not over. You get Sleep Powder. Sleep Powder's not nearly as good in Gen 2. In Gen 1, it's ex exceptional. But in Gen 2, the changes they made to the sleep mechanic really make sleep tactics not, not, not that good. That's bad. That's real bad. If I sludge bomb twice, I would have knocked the dragon head out. Oh, we still got it anyways. Also, uh, Churro is, Churro is uh, snoring. It's very cute. Okay, so sludge bomb against the Dragonites. Oh, we we won. Yeah, I think Rain Dance, then it goes down to turn three on the Gyarados, then you attack. I think you get one turn, maybe, on this on the Charizard. No no, he's snoring. He's like really oh he's asleep with his like little paws across his face. It's so cute. <laughs> Chad, all right, there we go. And then Professor Elm, two calls right in a row. <laughs> another one, another Chad. <sighs> 14 calls from Chad. So this is why you never add someone to your phone book in this game. Careful, careful. <laughs> Snorri, I hope it doesn't make you flinch. That's good. It seems like for whatever reason, we get a lot of calls like... There's another one. Okay, so he, do, he has service into the boat. Or I have service into the boat, at least, to receive his calls. I agree that the software time of day change have to be affecting the call frequency. Oh, that's interesting, actually. Maybe we'll learn something about the call mechanics in this game. Snowy, how do the calls work? <laughs> no. Joanna, thanks for the two euros. If Chad calls 10 to the 9 times, does he become a Giga Chad? I don't know. I think so. Uh, another Chad call. So yeah, that one was a, day, a time of day change on that one. Because I know that when you like when you reload a save or something like that, uh you get you get a a call usually. Like when you like stop playing for a while and then you come back on a different day, you usually get a call. So, I think it's supposed to be every hour. Mmm, interesting. So maybe it's like when it resets and then it thinks an hour has passed, then it's like Chad call time. So really we can manip Chad and make the software have him call us like every step of the game. Just like when the player steps change, change the clock, <laughs> get Chad to call. Uh, I don't know what I'm waiting for. Erica's going to be fine. <laughs> We've been trying to reach you about your Venomoth's extended warranty. Yeah, seriously, this one seems defective.
Chad percent speed run. Yeah, how fast can you get to Chad? Benamoth's not going to win that race. I'm like, after playing this, I'm like, I kind of want to do a good Pokemon in Gen 2, like an abandoned ship. It's like, this is uh, this has been a slog. I'm also not playing very well. And I did, I did have the realization that we won't have Rooter data for this because the Rooter crashed because of the Paralyzed Cure Berry. Oh, I get Psychic now, but it's useless because I already have it. It's frustrating where that TM is. No. This one's going to be fine because she's slower. Definitely not teleport. This is Chad's run. Chad crashed, crashed the router. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have all these people in my crystal series that no one will have any idea who they are. They'll be watching my fully produced video. I'll like release like, I don't know, like something hype. Can't think of anything hype right now. But like something hype, Scissor versus Scyther or something like that, and then they'll be like, "Oh, I want to check this out. It's going to be sweet." And then they'll they'll click on the video, and then I'll be talking about Chad, and they'll be like, "Who is Chad? Like, who is Dennis? Who are all of these people? Why is Venomoth an electric ground type?" Yeah, I don't know if the YouTube algorithm likes that, but. I know that all of you fine people help me out with it in the comments, so thank you. Oh, sad. Never explain in jokes. Yeah, unless when you explain the in jokes, it creates another layer of joke within the entire video. And I'm not going to explain that. No. You never know what the YouTube al algorithm wants. Well, I know the YouTube algorithm wants me to be like... Not ASMR voice all the time. Like, if you watch all the people who have really big followings on the platform, their energy is like very high. But I don't know why, like, when I watch the YouTubers who have, like, really large channels, there's something, like, um, I'm talking about, like, Mr. Beast. Um, so, like, I have never really been a big Mr. Beast fan. It's not that I don't like the guy. Um, I'm I incredibly neutral on him. I know very little about him. Um, I tried to watch one of his videos because I was like, maybe I'll learn something about making videos from watching the biggest YouTuber. That seems like it would be a good place to try to hone your craft. At least that's what I thought. Um, but the editing style is like, it's like, to me, it feels like reality TV, but like two times faster. It's like reality TV, but you play it at two times speed. And I don't know, it, like, I just, I can't watch it. It, it just... I think what uh, Showblet said is really true. High energy YouTubers sound kind of fake. I get nothing from them. Like, I think, like, my feeling is that, like, I want to come across as authentic and real. I want to have quality in doing that. Like, good visual quality, good vocal quality, good recording quality. I will do everything in my power to improve those things. But I don't want it to feel fake why did i go in here i have to walk back over to the power plant if i missed you first so right now the question is can we do this under an hour and 45 minutes i'm hoping we can Yeah, and that's the other thing is like the the algorithm tends to like news a lot, like stuff that's very fresh and topical, and like that makes a lot of sense, but that's really not what I'm interested in.
I, I made that decision a while ago when uh, Brilliant Diamond came out because I bought the game and I was like, I'm going to play it. I'm going to make content for it because it'll be really topical. It'll, it's going to perform very well with the algorithm. Maybe that'll boost my channel. So I filmed about five hours of gameplay. And in filming that gameplay, I was like, you know what? Like, I don't really want to like rush to produce a video that I don't care about to then release a video that I don't care about that's just to get views. What? Like, that is not enjoyable for me in any way. Like, am I going to derive some deep sense of pleasure from the fact that, like, my video gets 300,000 views? Like, I, I don't think I will. I would rather, like, make a video that I really want to make and, like, develop the overlay and make that stuff better and go, like, wow, look at how much, like, how much further this has come in the past three years and like this style of content has really evolved um and i've like had a part in that for me that's what's interesting i much prefer the vibe of your streams and videos oh i appreciate that why pants Okay, we haven't had any Chad calls in a while uh, since we got to Kanto, but I am changing manipping the clock less now, so that might be why. Hmm, <laughs> this Zap Cannon, good. Venomoth is such a weird Pokemon. Like, you think it would be best with Psychic, but Sludge Bomb is like, kind. I think it's better. I think it does slightly more damage than Psychic. Okay, there's another Chad, so he does have service. That was actually not a clock manip, by the way. There, There is no clock change there. Seventeen? Is that really seventeen? Ooh. Oh, gosh. No! I messed up the timing. Yeah, Dirty Dog, I, I appreciate that. Thank you for the donation. Oh, Chad again. That's uh, 18 now. 18 Chad calls. We're closing in on my estimate of 20 pretty quick. I think that, yeah, we might get like 22 or 23 maybe. Could see it being more. Is that one predictable? Yeah, it is. Uh, we'll we'll go back there and we'll test that one uh, after, because I need to spend some time with it anyways. What's it called? He calls it three drill, I think. But it's uh, he's predictable. Going south, if you're walking, you always skip him. But if you're biking, you get hit by him. Snowy told me that. Um, going north, I believe if, I believe if you cut the tree and he's off screen, you will walk right by him. Okay. Another Chad call. That's 19. So here, if I walk, he's not going to catch me ever, but then going to the side is the one where he can catch you. So you can go like that and then skip him. It's like open the menu, see what his position is, and then there's only four possible states for his position, and each one of them requires a different like delay in your input to successfully skip him. But like that's not actually really a problem. It's just like you need to have like three three different timings memorized. And I don't have them yet because I haven't been practicing it for more than like a couple days, but soon enough I'll have them and I'll be able to skip all those trainers. And see, like, okay, so, like, those trainers are a trainer that I could actually turn off. Like, I could say, like, okay, well, we're just going to stop them from spinning. We're going to face them in a direction where um, they can't catch me. Another Chad, Chad call again. 20. That's 20. So I could um, stop those spinners from catching me just by turning them off. 
face them in a direction where they're not mandatory and I'm done. But the reason I don't think that that's a good solution is because those ones are skill-based. The ones that are random are not skill-based, so it's just random RNG creeping into the results, making everything a little bit less clear for us, um, which in my opinion is less interesting. Like, I think it's more interesting if we're getting concrete data behind stuff, or as, like, as accurate data as is humanly possible playing these runs myself. But with those other ones, like, I think that I should be forced to invest the time to figure out a way to get by them in a way that is uh, consistent and skill-based. Because that can be done. I don't have any more uh, PP healing items. I still have Swift on my set also. Like, Venomoth learns so little, like, I could put, um, I'll probably put Giga Drain in its place at some point here in the near future, probably for blue, but yeah. I'm going to have to use Sludge Bomb on the area dose, but that's fine. It's neutral. Oh no, it's it's uh, not very effective actually, because it the bug type resists, or no, the bug type is neut takes neutral damage and the poison type resists. Gen 1 got me there. Poison resists, bug is weak in Gen 1. Okay, blue. Uh, let's teach Giga Drain. I think with Giga Drain, I'll have what I need to win this fight. Because my speed is great. All right, Pidgeot, Sludge Bomb. I think I should have uh, gone Leftovers for this battle. Giga Drain for the Rhydon, so that it doesn't mess with me with Sandstorm or annoying things like that. Sludge Bomb for the Arcanine, it'll be a two hit. Ooh, that did significant damage. Good thing it can't get the Sun and I am gonna knock it out little bit worried about taking a little bit like tiny bits of damage from both the following two Pokemon okay I was scared the Gyarados is gonna go for Hydro Pump but it just uses Twister <laughs> and then uh, Sludge Bomb is actually super effective against the Executor so we knock it out uh, it's usually I usually think of it as very bulky uh, Gen 1 has programmed me <laughs> okay Chad anyways um, Gen 1 has programmed me to think of it as very tanky 21 chads. I feel like if you give someone named Chad your number, you deserve this. <laughs> and for all my viewers named Chad, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, thank you for hanging out with me. Chad's in the chat. The chat chad. No, no, no. Okay. Um, I gotta face face red and um things do not look good, honestly my candy situation i got three should probably train i'm gonna train here so that i can heal train up a little bit if i can get to if i can get to 70 then i'll be 73 over damage running threshold I'm going to be faster than all of his Pokemon because Venomoth is quite naturally speedy, plus I have stat experience and I have the badge boost. That's not going to be an issue. My special stat won't be high enough, I don't think, to get past the threshold to increase my special defense, which could be a problem. It's nice that I don't have to use return. I'm actually not going to use return once during this run. 
So everyone rejoice, no return. We're not going to see a single return in this playthrough. That's awesome. But I, I'm probably going to use curse. Uh, do we go? Let's go. Okay. Had to focus during that section. Can't talk while doing that. Okay. I want a refund. Yeah, I know. No return in Johto. Yeah. You came here expecting return, and now you're not going to get it. Um, I... Um, let's just go with this. I, I actually think this might be enough. Like, I'm probably going to one-hit the Pikachu with Sludge Bomb, right? Yeah. I can put the Snorlax to sleep. It's not going to do anything because it pre-selected its move. Then it's going to try and snore. Oh, it woke up and did so much damage. Well, um... Let's try that again. Was that a crit? Okay, yeah, like amnesia. That, that makes more sense. What happened last time? Wow, this thing does a lot of damage. Oh, a crit. Sweet. <laughs> yeah! Venomoth! Uh oh, sun's out. Okay, let's stall. We gotta, we gotta buy our time. I don't know if I'll be... I'll be slower than it if I use this, won't I? I think so. I don't think I should do that. I don't think I should do that. <laughs> Just buy some time. Stall the sun out a little bit more. Okay, now let's knock it out. Yes! No more. No more sun. Okay, we can put this to sleep. Oh! Oh, 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 oh! Ah! Oh, are you kidding? It's a crit. <sighs> yeah, I don't want to use Psyche. I didn't want to knock it out. I wanted to wait for the perfect moment to knock it out. I could set up Curse here, but I don't want to. I'm like resisting it with every fiber of my being. I don't want the answer to be uh to be Curse. Okay, if we put this to sleep, then it can't set up Sunny Day. Then we can use Psychic to knock it out. It does more than Sludge Bomb, but honestly not that much. It does make it a two hit instead of a three hit, though, so it is the better play. I think I'll survive one Flamethrower, so let's just... Oh! That didn't do as much as I was expecting. Does Sludge Bomb do more? No. So they're... Similar damage ranges from both. Um, I think I'm going to one hit Sludge Bomb on the Espeon. No! Okay, Venomoth just doesn't have high enough attack. We're really close. You'll have 159 speed after one curse. That's too little. Okay. Mm. Ah, go to sleep. At least I have a physical move to knock the Snorlax out with. It can get really annoying if you don't. Also, putting the Snorlax to sleep uh, after taking a body slam gives me some time to, like, recover health from, like, leftovers, and I guess, like, the Snore is doing a little bit more damage, which is annoying, but sunny day. Okay, time to stall. Oh, well, we're good. No more sun. Jars our time. Put it to sleep. Maybe in case I get the special defense drop, but I don't. Po I guess I can't poison it if it's asleep. Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Okay, now we need to put the Aspion to sleep. Apparently, the answer here is just put everything to sleep. Yeah, and crit everything. I should be fine. I don't think I need to um, sleep the Blastoise. I can just attack it. Wow, that Surf did more than I was expecting, but we're still fine. All right. An hour and 48 minutes, 12 resets. An hour and 48 minutes and 3 seconds. Got to be specific here. 12 resets at level 74. 
Wow, and 21 chads, that's right. The chad counter was 21. I also had two blackouts, I believe, throughout that video. Or throughout this, this playthrough. Alright, I'm going to record this ending screen. Because I always do that. I make take a screenshot of it. Oh! 22 chads! Yeah, Chad. Hi, Scott. Good day. It's Chad. How are you? I know it's you. How are you? How are your Pokemon doing? Uh, pretty good. They just be red. You know, Professor Oak, so of course your Pokemon are fine. My Pokemon are doing well too, but then I'm trying to become a Pokemon professor. So that shouldn't be a big surprise. Oh yes, I came so close to catching a wild Raticate, but it got away. For the longest time, I've been wanting to observe Raticate rats. <laughs> See you later. Okay. Um, Chad. Chad, I'm not sure that Chad's approach might turn him into a professor, but he's he's definitely not going to do well with the ladies. Rats. He ended the call with the word rats. He just said rats. This is Chad, right? <laughs> All right. <sighs> All right, Chad. Is this Chad? I don't remember. <sighs> I've been waiting. Let's battle now. Okay, here we go. The grand finale of the run. Schoolboy Chad wants to battle. I saved. Yes, I saved. I gotta I gotta be careful, you know, like what about the radicates? Also, like he's talking about radicates, he wants to observe them, and then he has a Mr. Mime. Okay. Okay. Um can we knock it out with psychic? Let's try psychic. Whoa, that was fast. Yeah, we, we got it. <laughs> Alright, we beat Chad. I didn't study enough, I guess. No. Too focused on calling me. Use your phone less. <laughs> Does he fight you again? No. You must listen to Professor Oak's Pokemon talk, right? There is that super, super catchy song in one of the radio stations, though. I forgot what it's called. But when I was a kid, I, I remember that. I think it's called... Is it this one? I think it's so catchy. I don't have sound turned on because it'll be it'll make your ears bleed because it's four times speed, but Oh yeah. Okay, so that's that. We beat Pokemon Crystal with a Venomoth. Um, I don't really know what to do because we don't have a root file for this, so like uh we can try and just like optimize by going like just trying to figure out what the correct thing is, or we can scrub through the replay and go back and try fights again. Because we have a replay file of the entire playthrough, so I can go back through and record the route at a later date. Um, optimize based on vibes. Yeah. I think we gotta do a blind run number two and just try and play better. I think that's the way we gotta do it. Um, and then I'll rank Venomoth based on this result, and I'm sure I'll come back and try it again at some point on stream. Can you run the replay at more than 240 frames per second? I can. I'll show you. Um, just for anyone who is uh, visually sensitive, please uh, look away right now, because stuff is going to get like very disorienting on screen if you're not ready for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the replay. Uh, actually, I'm going to back the replay up before I load it. And... Because I'm I'm paranoid of everything breaking. I back everything up. Uh, when I was in school, I worked for a year on this like music composition project. It was a piece for French horn. Was it French horn viola? French horn viola, clarinet, and piano. Because my composition teacher was like, don't write for a standard ensemble. That's not what modern composers do. And I was like, okay, so I'll write for this ensemble that's never going to get performed. Yeah, it never got performed, of course. But that's probably not because of the ensemble. It's because I lost the files when I deleted stuff off my hard drive. All right, so uh, here's how the replay functionality works. Uh, thanks to Snowy for making this emulator. This emulator is incredible. Here's how it works. So when I click um, replay, like that kind of thing, I'm going to put my overlay in test mode, but 
that'll help it. So I put the replay on. This is just the replay. So when I started recording it, I was probably talking about something on stream. Uh, and then uh, at some point, this will start playing back and it will recreate the exact actions that we, yeah, we need a scrub bar. I know, <laughs> I know, <gasps> please scrub bar. I know you've been working on a bunch of other stuff, which is really important to work on. So uh, stay focused on that. Um, this did not work correctly. Sorry. I think it's my overlay's fault. So what should happen is when I press new game here, it should uh, notice that it's a new game and then the timer should start running. Basically allowing me to refilm the run if I want to. I'm not going to do that. I just want to show it to you because I think it's cool. Yeah, see there? Press new game, run started. Beautiful, right? So now I can go through, record all my splits again, record the route again, that sort of thing. So that I, uh, essentially, if I have the replay file, I always have any data that would be embedded within the run, except the real time to millisecond uh, uh, level of accuracy. Right now it's to like, it's like, it's a, the run is within one second of what it would have been. So you can see me here, not knowing what to name it, and then figuring out. Yeah, so all this is correct. Okay, so it's going to be very visually disorienting, everyone. Please, uh, your eyes are going to bleed if you uh, if you watch. But here's how fast it can go. So very fast, as you can see. Ta-da! So we went very fast through a bunch of stuff. Um, and now we're back here in Sprout Tower. We can do stuff. Um, yeah. What, uh, eventually, like, I'd like to get a scroll bar on this so we can just, like, click where we want to go and then just jump to that point and then get, like, uh, um, a feature that will have, like, uh, markers on the timeline of the replay so that you can see where all the major trainers were and just jump back to whichever one you want. Something like that. Um, yeah. Eventually, it will it will be able to do those things, I think. But as long as uh, Snowy is is okay with it, but for now it can't. But we couldn't. We can scrub to something uh, and get there, and then and then test a fight. So like uh, the first fight that I thought was like exceptionally bad was Whitney. I I didn't really have a f a plan going into it. I think I got lucky on the first three gym leaders. But of them, I think Whitney was the one that I was least prepared for. So we are now inside of Whitney's gym. See, I, I was nice to you. Look at that. I'm thinking about, thinking about my viewers. So courteous. Okay, so here um, we go to the replays menu and I just go um, stop replay. And now I have control. Oh, well, well I want to try it at uh, higher levels and see what it's going to make it feel better anyways. Stop. <laughs> huh. Disable when it's actually doing its job. It records inputs and it also records keyframes, I believe. So it's like every second it's taking a save state and then it deletes all the data from the save state that is that has not changed since the last save state. So that we get like, um, Snowy has been able to get it. Like the compression on these files is wild. When it started, a replay of one of my runs was somewhere around 500 to 600 megabytes. And now they're like two or two to four megabytes. So it's uh it's really good. Also, I'm just gonna turn off the timer. It's gonna probably start and do weird stuff because it's not it's not again like my overlay has no mode for like you're doing testing. It's just like the replay functions like it are the timer functions and the resets function like they would in a regular run. Uh okay, so for Whitney. What makes the most sense here? Like what's my friendship at? I know I blacked out twice, so it'll be a little bit higher. So my friendship, my return power is like 59. And 
level 23. I could boost with the pink bow to get a little bit more damage. Hmm. I think keeping disable foresight for the mill tank? Why? Yeah, no, but it will be 60 if I don't black out. Yeah, the, uh, Snowy's work is amazing. Uh, I'm going to get like five comments on this video being like, where can I download the emulator? I really want to try it out myself. This emulator is not yet on GitHub. Um, I'm hoping that very soon it will be on GitHub. But uh, for now, it's not. Uh, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done before things are like polished. Um, and I don't want to like uh, pressure Snowy in any way to release it before it's ready. So... The emulator will come out when uh, when it's ready, and then all of you will be able to benefit from all this incredible work. Hmm. I think, like... I don't get much of a benefit from going to 25 to get Leech Life, right? Like, that doesn't help that much. Stun Spore could potentially help more messing the mill tank up. Um, I don't really want to have to resort to a strategy like Disable or Supersonic because they have 55% accuracy and that doesn't feel very good. I think for the second run, what my strategy is going to be is like fight more trainers, which will increase my friendship value. Then go back and get the pink bow after defeating Faulkner so that I can boost returns power a little bit. And then hopefully that will give me the damage I need to like two shot the Clefairy and three shot the Mill Tank maybe. Um, and, and, like, if I fight more trainers, then I'll be a higher level, maybe 25, which will, like Smash Math says, um, give me more power and a better, like, damage rounding threshold. Uh, let's try this. One second, uh... So yesterday I was a bit of a cheater in the streams, if you saw them. <laughs> Today uh, I'm going to also be a cheater, because that's how we do things on this channel. Hey, there's an error in the mapper. There's an error in the mapper. Nickname is not working properly. I will have to fix that. But yeah, I'm going to change my held item with game hook. So I'm just going to edit it quickly here. Pink bow, we're going for pink bow. Okay, we now have the pink bow, as you can see. <laughs> Shake my head, we can't go without technical issues and cheating. I know, right? The cheating doesn't bother me, but the technical issues really do. Ha, <laughs> metronomed crab hammer? Okay. Um, wow, that, um... Uh, what? Um, that did like nothing. Okay, so confusion does more. I'm going to win because I confused it. Oh, maybe not. I got attracted. Again, see the timer. See the timer. It's like, it's my time. No, it's not. It's not. It's not a run. Let's try again. With confusion. Okay, so it's going to be a three hit. Huh? Ah, <gasps> oh, transformed into Venomal. I love that. Okay, um... Yes! You need to do at least 12 damage to benefit from the pink bow. That is true. Amazing. That's a great comment. I just did research on Chad for the lols. He is canon. He was there when Ash and Goha. When Ash and Goha. I think that's what it says. We're at the tower and saw Ho. Oh, cool. Chad is canon. Amazing. Well, then we we have to incorporate like some kind of anime, um, maybe subtle reference 
to Chad in the art. And he, he definitely has to have a phone, but I think it needs to be like one of those giant 90s cell phones. Because like, there's no way. Maybe a rainbow in the background? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ho, -ho like flying in the background? Don't worry, I already started. Yeah, I figured you would have. Oh, this is great. This is great. My play might not have been good, but at least we got a meme. Go. Pronounced go. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's cool. You made a mock-up for the UI in Figma. Sweet. Curious to see what you came up with. Um, I'm actually so curious. I'm going to look at it now. And send me a preview. How did you send me the preview? That's the real question. On your email? Which email? Scott's thoughts Pokemon at gmail.com? You should send it there, not to the other one. It'll be a while until I get the other one. I found it here on YouTube. Yeah, it'll be a while until I get that one. Um, okay, so like I think Whitney's luck, but we have tools with disable and supersonic. It actually might be oh never mind, I got it right away. Cool, cool, cool. All right, I'll I'll send you an email back about it. Yeah, the uh, the resets counter beside the timer is something I've tried like a million times and it never works. Um, and I don't think it'll work moving forward either. Unfortunately, it's a cool thought, but it, it just doesn't work out. Um. Okay, I I've put together like four mockups of the reset timer being up next to the timer. And I put like, um, I put the move set also under the TMHM learn set, so it's like closer to where it is in game. But th those ones both don't work. It, that doesn't look right. Okay, I'm gonna do another run. Uh, we gotta choose a hidden power type, actually. I think ice makes the most sense. But. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I think train early game. That'll make things easier. Let's look at some of the... We'll, we'll look at some of the um, hidden power typings here. So this is what it looks like behind the scenes. Check out the Discord on links on my other videos. Um, anyways, yeah, you can download this yourself and play if you want. Yeah, so it's a green screen kind of. It's actually so I can see the edges of it with the pixels so that you can line the game area up perfectly so that you don't accidentally uh, have your game misplaced. Ice. So these are the DVs. It'll show you the DVs for, for the hidden power typing. So like fire is kind of trash because you have 5 HP. 14 attack, 12 defense. It's really unfortunate. Like I would love hidden power fire for this. I think it would it would make Jasmine much easier on all the Magnemites throughout the run pretty trivial. What about water? A little bit better, but still not very good. Uh, ground is uh, marginally better because it's really great coverage, but the HP and the attack DV leave a lot to be desired. Flying, quite bad. Worse than ground, not as good coverage. In this case, just useless coverage. You basically only want flying if you want to hit fighting types for super effective damage. Ah, you could get a same type attack bonus move in the form of hidden power psychic. This is wrong. Should be 11. Still an error in the calculation somewhere. That's annoying. Grass. 
not good. I just know that all the like four starter types, fire, water, grass, and electric, are not really not that good. Bug is one of the worst. Uh, I guess it's not that bad. The HP is still fine, but like these are thirteen, thirteen, and like like not really good coverage. Fighting is probably the worst. This is wrong. This should be three. The ones that say five in the HP should be three in the HP instead. And the ones that say thirteen, the the HP is too too high. Except when it says seven, then it's correct. This should be eleven HP. Hmm. I think it's I think it's ice. Honestly. I think it's ice. Yeah, hidden power flying is good if you're Tyranitar and you're four times a week to fighting type moves. Like then and you have great attack stat. Then it makes sense. Okay, let's do another one. Hopefully this will be better. Come on. I can do this. Hidden power is set to ice. Overlay is configured. We'll get the replay started, and then we'll get jump right into this. Replay is started. Let's go. Yeah, now we're gonna, I'm gonna double check that it does say Hidden Power Ice on the right hand side. Thank you for uh, saying that. And yes, it does say Hidden Power Ice. So we've done everything correctly to this point. We won't have to restart like with Quillfish. Okay, let's go. So in the early game, I'm going to knock out the wild Pokemon. I did this last time, but I'm really going to just focus on getting as much experience and levels as possible. For most runs, I'm probably going to be turning wild encounters off, but for this one, I think it makes sense to keep them on just to gain experience. Because Faulkner is kind of sketchy, and then the Sage in the Tower was also kind of sketchy. And Bugsy's sketchy. Or Bug no, Bugsy was easy. Bugsy was the easiest of the... Yeah, what am I saying? Um, Bugsy wasn't sketchy, but Whitney was. So... Wait, did that have... That had a berry. The Centret. The Wild Centret had a berry. Oh my god. Churro's little paw just, like, came over, like, really close to my arm. He is, like, stretching out. It's so cute. Will we ever see Sunny Day, Hidden Power Fire, and Solar Beam? Yeah, in, in Generation 3. For Steven, that's great. But in Generation 2, I don't think we'll see that. In Generation 3, though, Hidden Power Fire is good. The reason is, is that they changed the way that Hidden Power worked. They changed how Hidden Power works in Generation 3. Because you have IVs, there's a lot more stats to manipulate. And so Hidden Power is based on all six of your IVs, basically meaning that to get any Hidden Power typing you want, the maximum amount that you lose from your IV is one. And when the total value ranges from zero to 30, 31, uh, losing one is not that bad. And it doesn't. Ha it's not like you lose one HP and it has an effect on your attack stat or something like that, like it is in this generation where you lose an attack stat point and then your HP gets tanked. Um, instead, you just lose one from your attack and that that's it. So Hidden Power is much more flexible in Generation 3. Plus, Generation 3 is much harder, so Hidden Power doesn't feel as broken. It's like everything in Generation 2 is just like, it all, conspire, it all conspires to centralize the metagame. Hey, Will Soon. I think I said that with enough O's. All right, rivals defeated. 
head back to town and name him. Of course, three question marks. How's spin class been going? Well, the furnace the furnace broke, so I, I didn't go to spin class on Monday this week. <laughs> and last Friday I uh I went in my bike, um I couldn't clip my foot in, so like the first track started and then like my foot just like came flying out. I thought it was clipped in, but it wasn't. Then I tried, it wouldn't work. There was like no other bikes. I went over to a bike that seemed to be vacant. They're like, that one doesn't have a pedal. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> They eventually put me in the corner of the room, and uh, I was like, I like it over here. Can I just, like, be in the corner all the time? <laughs> less, There's less people surrounding me. Put me in the corner, put some music on, and let me do a repetitive activity. It feels like playing Pokemon. I love it. So next time I go, which is hopefully going to be Friday, I might go and sit on the sit on the corner bike again. Tro, what are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? You look so silly. Uh, they're both really sweet. Tro and Rosie, they both come and uh, sleep in the office when I'm working in here. So he goes in his bed, like right beside me uh, by the secondary monitor where the overlay is on. And then she curls up on my wife's chair, which is like right underneath where his bed is. So I think like one of the reasons that Venomoth struggles so much is that in the early game, all of its the moves that it gets access to oh, don't talk to him. All the moves that Venomoth gets I'm gonna be wise here. Look at my PP. Seriously, look at it. Um it's getting kinda low, so we should go to the nurse nurse joy and get get tended to. Yeah, only three left. Whew. Almost ran out. There we go. Thanks, Nurse Troy. All right, so um, I think the reason it struggles is, like, look at its starting set. Tackle, Disable, Foresight, Supersonic. By the way, that's the almost the exact same set it starts with in Generation 1. The substitution is Foresight in the place of Confusion. Confusion to start off with would be so much better. But unfortunately, we don't get that in Gen 2. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm not giving you my number. I saw how that went last time. Never again. So yeah, why did they take away Confusion? I don't know. It's weird. Like, they just wanted to make it worse in the early game. Okay. It's not even that good. Like, once you get Confusion, it's not that good. Because, like, it gets Psybeam at 36, which is way too late. And then all the moves it gets along the way to there are just not very, not very good. Like, Poison Powder, very low utility, especially in a solo run. Leech Life, not very good. It's better in Gen 1 than it is in Gen 2. Um, Stun Spore can be helpful in like some situations, mostly against Bugsy and Whitney, but Bugsy is not a problem for Venomoth, as I said earlier. And Whitney is like problematic, but you have to be level 28, and I wasn't level 28 with the medium fast growth rate. Then Gust is just not very good. Uh, it's a flying type move, so we might get stabbed with it, but uh, it's still not very good. Um, so basically the best move that Venomoth gets in the early game is Swift, and most Pokemon get Headbutt, but because Venomoth doesn't have access to the standard move that a lot of others get, it, it really falls behind in this section of the game, and there's not really a way to recover its result, even if it got great after that. And it doesn't. Its best move is Sleep Powder, which is at like 42, I think. And by the time you get to Sleep Powder, it really feels like... It really feels like you're too far behind. And then Sleep also got nerfed in Generation 2. So there's a lot working against Venomoth as a solo running Pokemon in this game. Yeah, they did, they did have to uh, balance the fact that Venomoth is every type, so... Except Poison and Bug, of course, but like, they had to balance that out when they made the game. 
Good job, Game Freak. Okay, Tackle, don't miss too much because I, I'm relying on you, Tackle. Terrified it's going to miss like two times on the hoot hoot and I'm not going to knock it out. Oh, okay, we're good. I'm going to use the escape rope to get out of here. Because last time we tried to fight the sage and that went really badly, lost a lot of time. I think this is far more, uh, makes far more sense. I'll go back in and fight him now, but I'm going to buy another escape rope so I don't waste extra time. Because at some point I'm going to need to buy escape rope, so we might as well just do it now. And I'm going to fight more trainers so I'll have more money by the time we get to Azalea Town to buy the repels. Yeah, I should hit 13 before Faulkner, but I also want a good level for Whitney, so just... Even if I do a little bit of overtraining in this section of the game, it's it's okay. Um, the wild Pokemon in Johto are so awful to fight that... Fighting all of the, like, random trainers and stuff along the way is, is generally a good idea. Also, my battle against Faulkner last time was unconvincing. It was... Like, I got through it, but it was unconvincing. So I would rather uh, have a more convincing time against him. Plus, this guy is kind of scary if you have a Pokemon that's weak to flying-type moves. His AI forces him to only use Peck, and it does a lot of damage, like you can see there. The next guy doesn't have flying-type moves, so I should be fine. I uh, know he used Gust, but I, I used Disable to stop Gust. Last time. Because, like, I figured, like, I think last time I, like, confused the Pidgeotto and then I uh, disabled Gust. I gotta equip a berry. I also forgot to do that last time. Save again. Okay, here we go. Faulkner. Sometimes I've beaten Bugsy by this time. Oh, and we start the fight off with a miss. Two misses on the Pidgey and a fail to two hit. So we are not off to a good start. So I'll disable Gust. It wastes it. Oh, it goes for Mud Slap sometimes? Okay, that's unfortunate, but I think we should be okay. Yeah, we're okay. Um, kind of. It's kind of cool that like disable can be useful in a situation like this. It's risky, of course, because 55% accuracy is not good. Oh, this name does have an E in it. How have I never seen the E? Gotta fix that again. Is it the poison cure berry that has no E? Or am I just wrong? My world is falling down. So I'll fight everyone on this route. I'm going to fight the Goldeen trainer last because uh, the Goldeen has peck. Which of course is a flying type move. Oh, the pathing there was really bad. Not great. Okay. So I'm going to announce it now because if you've made it this far into the stream or you're just joining us, uh, you deserve to have a little treat. Why, you might ask? I don't know. This is when I thought about it. But tomorrow I'm going to come back. I'm going to do another stream. This one's going to be really fun. We are going to revisit... Actually, this is going to be my first Generation 3 stream in a year. The last one I did was Tropius, and I did it on Twitch. That tells you how long ago I did it. So, yeah, we're going to do a Gen 3 stream. And I'm going to replay Mewtwo to see how much better I have gotten in a year and a couple months. A year and, like, actually, it's almost a year and six months, actually. 
I played Mewtwo in September. Oh, oh gosh. Okay, we're okay. But so yeah, we're gonna do Mewtwo. It's gonna be really fun. I am excited for it. It's gonna be Emerald. We we got to re, re we the emerald I already did a fire red leaf green playthrough and that was not very long ago. Yes, we have rooting software for generation three now. So it'll actually be my first run in emerald of the year, and uh, it'll be the first time I get to test out the rooting software to see how it works in in the new game. So I'll probably have lots of failures for the rooting software side of things, but that's okay. Like, you know, stuff breaks. Um, when you're developing it and it's it's new um but but hopefully uh from what i've seen so far of my small preliminary tests it, it's working pretty well Yeah, it'll be roughly at the same time of the day. Probably a little bit earlier than this stream. Uh, Foresight's bad, so we'll, we'll get rid of that. Last time I got rid of Disable too early. That was a mistake. There's also some... There's like the possibility of using Flash, but you can't get rid of it for so long that I really dislike putting it on uh, my set. Obviously, don't fight this thing. What hidden power are you going to use for Mewtwo? I don't think it needs hidden power, honestly, but uh, I think Dark is probably the best because I have to look into it. I haven't actually like done any like research on it yet. I just know that last time, I'm pretty sure last time I didn't use Calm Mind soon enough and I really need to just like get Calm Mind and then use that to beat everything. And I also think that I overtaught, I touched Shockwave too early on and then I lost it by the time that I, I really needed to have it. Because Shockwave is Shockwave is very, 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 very good against Sydney, especially if you can boost your special. You can just like the Mighty Anna does nothing, and then you just set up for free, and you're done. <laughs> Hidden power. You can buy uh, you can buy Psychic from the Game Corner in those games. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of Supersonic because I don't want to be using that move. I have confusion. Okay, let's go. Hmm. Uh, this beginning is going so much better than last time. There's some like small like inconsistencies and in, like overworld pathing and stuff. I'm not having a great day in terms of my play, but this is dramatically better than the last run. Yeah, like um, <laughs> youngster youngster Calvin is really hates psychic types in the early game, and I found that out when I did the original Mewtwo run. But now I know about it, so I just like you just get to struggle as fast as possible in the early game, and then. And then crush him. My furnace? My furnace is brand new now, so it's, uh, yeah, it's all fixed. All right. Almost at Bugsy. Hey, it missed the stun spore. Sweet. Okay, here we go, Bugsy. Give a berry. Sweep a Bugsy. Cowgirl something, I don't know. Okay. Uh, Kakuna is going to be a one hit, and then I'm going to, like, what, four hit the Scyther? Something like that. I can disable uh, Fury Cutter if it gets brutal, but it's not going to. It's doing very little damage. Three hit. 
Level up to 20, say no to poison powder because it's a bad move. Then we'll go fight the rival. Yeah, it got quite cold. Uh, but then my uh, my wife's, like my in-laws came over and uh, they brought over a bunch of space heaters. So we set those up. Knock out the Ghastly one hit. Quilava's next. He didn't switch this time. See, he has a chance to switch, but it's not guaranteed. Okay, we confused the Quilava again twice today. It, it, this time it did more than it did last time, but not much. Okay, so Rival's done. That's that. I already caught a Bellsprout, so I don't need to worry about the Oddish this time. We're going to get Psyduck in the National Park. Uh, yeah, we, we added air conditioning this time. I guess I taught Flash last time and I still went through all the caves when they were dark. That's how men do it. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, hey, it's the Psyduck! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Is it a guy Psyduck? It is! We're naming him Chad. Okay. Now, now we can proceed. Okay, don't get headbutt this time. That was a mistake last time. All right, so this run is going much better. I'm feeling great about this. Um, after the last stream, I was feeling a little bit down, honestly. I was just like, uh, or the, not the last stream, but the last, um, I should fight these people. <laughs> um, after the last, uh, the last run, I was just like, oh, I didn't do very well. Like, I always get a little bit bummed out when I don't play well. Um, oh, Churro is on the move. I always get a little bit bummed out when I don't play well, but I, it feels like the RNG is the RNG is being kind to me now. I'm feeling better. Hey. Granbull. You know what Pokemon's good? You know what Pokemon's good? It's like 140 base attack. I think. Or it's 120. It's ridiculous, whatever it is. It's over 100. Significantly over 100. Yeah, there he is. The one, the only. Churro used Roar, he did. So I used up a lot of my healing items last time and I didn't get the super potion from the forest, so I'm going to grab the one from the daycare. If you don't know about this hidden item, I'll show it to you right now. So in the daycare, right over here, is a hidden item, it's a super potion. It's a little bit out of the way, so I normally don't get it, but in a run like this where the Pokemon's not great and I want to just not have to backtrack to the Pokemon Center too many times. Uh, I think it's valuable to pick up something like that. And we've got to go into this Poke Center so that we don't accidentally teleport back to Azalea Town. It has been known to happen. Yeah, Granbull is basically Ursaring Light. Yeah, it's true. I don't know why. They, they like introduced two Pokemon that are essentially like the same Pokemon. One is just slightly worse. It's like weird. Okay, let's get that friendship. Love me! There's a potion here too. And a paralyze heal right there. Luckily these don't have like uh, Thunder Wave. Otherwise I wouldn't do this fight now, but... See, uh, Gramble isn't a fairy type in this generation, but it is the fairy Pokemon, which is the exact same... Uh, like species term as Clefable. Kind of weird. But both of them became fairy types then in Generation 6, which makes a lot of sense. Almost didn't get the other coins. I'm glad I caught it quickly. Let's go get Kenya. Is is the Psyduck just always going to have to be named Chad now? I think that the Psyduck might always have to be named Chad. Yeah, he's staring at me. He he just like comes in and screams and looks directly at me like, Hey! Hey! 
hey, pay attention to me. Like, what do you want? And then he like makes a little like trilling sound and like flops over. It's so cute. What a good guy. Uh, by the way, there's a berry tree across that little like pond right here. It is the mystery berry, which restores PP, of course. Okay, so we're like fighting a bunch of these trainers. We're going to get to 25 before Whitney. That'll improve things. Uh, I think I want to skip Bill. Uh, by the way, you cannot push, like, go forward right away when you get by Bill. Um, you have to wait a little bit. Otherwise, it uh, otherwise he catches you because he doesn't uh, start spinning right away. He starts spinning like a frame after the inventory closes. Okay. This is where I'd get the Psyduck, by the way. Thanks to Snowy for this tip. And why is it night there? It's night there because that's when you catch Psyduck at night. It's also night in the forest, you just can't tell because the tree coverage is like making that place dark all 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 uh day. All do all day long. Hmm. <laughs> It lowered my speed. That, by the way, I don't know if like Constrict is glitched in Gen 1, but it feels like it never lowers your speed. Goodbye, Tackle. Keep Disable. Teleport back. Heal up. Yeah, Psyduck does really seem like the Pokemon that would sleep all day. It's got like a migraine or something. It's just like, oh, I gotta sleep. I'm like... Scary face. All right. Oh, we didn't go back for the pink bow. But we don't need it. We're just using, uh, what's it called? Confusion anyways. That does mean I can equip something else, like the Paralyzed Cure Berry, in case the Clefairy <laughs> uh, rolls something interesting with Metronome. I am actually going to do a regular berry. Changing my mind on that. Wait, what? Did that change? It did, but it didn't update. We like throw an error or something? Oh, we did with the Paralyzed Cure Berry. Of course we did. <laughs> Don't give that item. It's going to break everything. Okay, Whitney, here we go. Ta-da! Okay. Oh, we're going to two-hit the Clefairy. Sweet. Then the Mill Tank. It's going to... Oh, that's a lot. Could you not? Okay, starting that. So rollout's doing a lot. No, disable. Okay, well, it... Well... I don't know how to comment on that. A lot happened all at once, but we're okay. Whew. It was like, didn't disable it twice, then it naturally missed, then I disabled it, got hit by a tract, but despite one of the most annoying status conditions in the entire game, I was still able to move and finish it off. Yeah, we take those. That's right, we do. No. <laughs> I wanted to stop a little bit a little bit back of that. Uh well we'll black out here if I lose. Ha <laughs> smog. Alright. You can smog, don't fire punch. Don't fire punch. Yes. Hype. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Feels good. Feels good. Mm. Yeah, heart rate, definitely. Oh my. Veno Chad strikes again. Yep. I'm hoping this is going to be a three hit this time. Yeah, it is going to be. Okay. No, no, I don't want to run. I want to gain like as much experience as possible right now. But like I, I should be running in most cases. I, I'm going to stand by my decision there, though. I, I do just want to gain as much experience as is possible in this run. Because I don't want to have to, like, do the extra training that I backtracked for at Jasmine. If I can avoid... I'll, I'll fight this guy. I have super effective damage. No, 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 that guy doesn't have social anxiety because he's predictable spinner. The the Voltorb guy that's beside him won't, won't catch me because he, he has, uh... What's it called? 
He's got um, he's random spinner. I do have hidden power ice. That's right. It will change a decent amount. Huh. Bye bye, Doug Trio. Okay. All right. Stun Spore. Nope. Not a good move in this situation. Much more useful early on in the run. Much less useful when you get more powerful moves. There's always this dilemma when you're running Swift and uh, you can get Return, but you can't get Headbutt. Because like, I would like to go back and get Return, but I don't want to walk back to Goldenrod City without Fly, because that wastes time. So then you have to like, you have to choose, do you go back to get it or not? And I think in this case, I'm not going to go back to get it because I'm going to be using mostly hidden power and confusion. This spot is like, it's a lot to do with the overworld stuff. Okay, hidden power. In the place of disable, of course. It's a nice type move. We didn't mess up. Let's go. Let's go fight Chad. See, we'll just do the training. Like, do the training when you first go through the area so that you don't have to backtrack for it later. So Hidden Power is now my go-to move because it has more effective power than Confusion unless it's resisted. So like in the case of this Chad duck, I have to use Confusion. And here's actual Chad. Hi, Chad. Bye, Chad. I'm going to say no to your phone number this time. Apologies. Can his ego take it? I don't know. Let's heal. We'll heal in this fight. Leech life is the same as Swift. If you're wondering why Swift and Leech life have weird effective powers, it's because the badges from Bugsy and Whitney boost the power of those types of move. <laughs> Bye, Chad. Keep studying. Yeah. Fight you. Morty was a problem last time, as I remember it. Oh, close. Krabby has so little special defense. It's like paper-thin special defenses. I don't need the good rod. Force of habit. I also don't need the balls here. So I don't need my great balls when I have the Chad duck. Officially, these are things that I say on my channel. That's where we've come to. <laughs> I hope you're glad that you subscribed. Yeah, my psychic flying Pokemon's gonna be pretty good against. Ah, my psychic flying Pokemon's gonna be pretty good against uh, against Chuck. This guy, okay, what's his name? Birdkeeper Theo or something? Um, Gust was absolutely useless last time, so I'm not going to teach it. But, like, this guy, uh, he has so many Pokemon, they're all kind of low-leveled, and they sometimes have Quick Attack, which wastes even more time. Maybe he should get an Art, too. 
Very glad I found your channel sub years ago. Well, it's good to have you around for the long term. That's something I've noticed is like my audience is like quite small. Like there's so many channels that have like every... <sighs> there's tons of channels on YouTube, right? That have like hundreds of thousands of views per video every time they release one. And that's awesome. Um, I feel incredibly grateful that I have a small and niche audience that will watch me get roared out by Growlithe over and over and over again. All right, we beat it. Wow. No, no, buy the house. Do it. Much more important. We'll, we'll get art. We'll, uh, eventually, I'm sure if I keep going, we'll have art for every single trainer. <laughs> They'll all have some kind of story. Like, this is the bug catcher in Gen... Like, this is the bug catcher in Gen 1. I was worried about that. <laughs> I didn't know what happened if I fell down that hole. Um, anyways, um, this is... I, and it's because of the angle I came from it at. Uh, I do realize what would happen if you go from the other side. But for whatever reason, walking straight up into it, I was like, Oh no, I'm going somewhere else. No, it, it goes to the same place. That's not how that hole works. Um, anyways, it's, uh, eventually we'll have art for all of the trainers. It'll be great. Nope. Not you, Chad. There's got to be someone who dislikes this stream. Stream, Whoever disliked this stream will be the person that was like, hey, you need to like make more produced videos. That There'll be one person that was like that. Hey, make more produced videos. Okay, okay. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> Just wait. Patience. They're coming. They're coming back soon. All right, we did it. This fight was not bad. Magnemite's still annoying, but it's fine. With the training, we'll just get um, Sleep Powder before Jasmine. I think that's the solution for her, rather than a worse hidden power typing. Oh yeah, Chad could have disliked and left. That's probably what it was. Scott, I called you 22 times and you didn't answer. No, Chad, I answered every single one of your calls. I even read one of them out to the viewers. Even though reading the in-game text is something that makes me cringe so hard when I watch videos, it's like, I understand that you need to say something and pad your runtime. Like, I get it. I am a content creator. But I also just, like, want to hear your thoughts on things rather than the usually poorly constructed narrative of the game. You have to make three videos a day, minimum, or else, girl. Yeah, I know. It feels like that sometimes. Look, at, I'm being careful. I'm being careful and taking one step at a time. One step at a time. That's all the singing you got today. Oh, okay. Morty. Gonna give the mint berry. Check this out. Look at that play. That's high level play right there. Yeah. You could say professional play, actually. I'm a pokey athlete. Look at me go. One hitting Ghastlies. One hitting Haunters. Likely two hitting Gengars. Not dodging Hypnosis's. Maintaining my mint berry so that I can use it against Chuck. Look at that. Easy. Level 35. Ah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Do, do, do. So I follow these people so I don't have to worry about them. I also got the experience. I'm not going to forget strength. So the nice thing about Psyduck as an HM user, 
is that you don't have to pick up the Dratini, and you can teach all of the water HMs plus strength to it. So that's why... Was there a chat message about this? Who didn't message me in chat? I don't see a message. No one, no one alerted me to the fact that I had not defeated the Kimono Girls. Ah, <laughs> uh, you have failed me. <sighs> All right, it's okay. It's what? It's like twenty seconds. It's like twenty seconds. It's not that much in the grand scope of things for a Gen two run. It has much less physical defense. I just got here, don't blame me. Okay. Oh, thank you, Dirty Dog. I appreciate the reminder. Kubon, you gotta go let everyone else know that. Please reply to all the comments on my videos. Okay. Not bad. Honestly, like, tell if I didn't have teleport and I had, like, say, like, reset my waypoint to the Allvine Pokemon Center, that would have been really frustrating and taken a lot more time, but it really wasn't that bad. Um, one thing uh, worth noting... I'll do some training here on the sea. Oh, I can get side beam. Nice. So I'll do some training here at sea. Side beam's going to be better in slot one because there's a decent number of poison types out here. No, you don't need a second HM user because you, you surf whirlpool waterfall strength on Psyduck. And then... Um, and then cut and flash on the Oddish or Bellsprout, depending on which one you run into. Um, did I miss any? Well, fly on the Abra. Not fly. Teleport on the Abra and uh, fly on Kenya. So I have four, four users, four HM users. But um, you can get, you can get five with the Dratini and Krabby. Because then you need the you need the Dratini for waterfall. You could put Flash on Abra, but you can also put it on the grass type. Like it doesn't matter. Flash can go on either of them. <laughs> can you believe that Scott said Abra can fly? One thing that I want to do at some point this year with Gen 2 is like take some time and do an exhaustive look into all the trainers that occur throughout the game and really figure out like I did last year in yellow version, which trainers are the ones you want to fight, which trainers are the ones you absolutely want to skip because their experience yields are awful. Because like right now I kind of just go through here and I fight everyone and then I move on to the island, which I don't know if that is really like the best approach. Uh, I'm going to discontinue training now. I've got like a, a quite a bit of experience. Anyways. Yeah, I think, I think the Psyduck is like a decent HM user. I think Paris is the one that I'll probably never use. It does get dig, which is advantageous, but I don't feel it's a, like I don't feel okay catching it because it's a five percent in the forest, and like realistically, there's so much RNG involved in like doing a five percent chance encounter event that like I don't know, it just feels kind of off to me to like root that in as part of the plan. I feel like I need to play the game the way I would if there was no RNG manipulations, but then have the RNG manipulations so that the results are very fair and comparable. I hope that makes sense. I'm not always good at articulating that.
Okay, um, Chuck. Let's see how this goes. No resets so far. This is going well. No blackouts either. Under 45 minutes. It's pretty slow time, uh, all things considered, in Generation 2, but we're going to two-hit the Polyrath, so... It only goes for Mind Reader. No problems. Okay. Teach Fly to Kenya. I'm going to skip the pink bow until radio tower, which is the faster thing to do. I don't often do this in my runs, but we're really not using many normal moves. And we're about to unlock Sludge Bomb. Yeah, the rival is named Triple Question Mark. He has to be. I'm just going to use Psybeam. I, I know maybe Hidden Power would have three shot, or more consistently three shot, but it doesn't really matter that much. I should probably push down to get to the Fly user, because it's last. One thing I've been thinking about more is like reordering my HM users so they're always in the same order. I haven't spent any time planning that out, uh, surprisingly, in my runs. I put a lot of thought into most things, but I haven't into that. <laughs> Good old Sludge Bomb. I do like that one, that name for it. Like Bomb, like B-A-L-M. Sludge, sludge Bomb. Alright, it's one of these annoying guys with Magnemites, so save. Just when they confuse you and then, like, paralyze you and everything gets bad, and they use Sonic Boom for consistent damage, sometimes you can lose. Sludge Ball. I feel like, yeah, I feel like Sludge Ball is, like, that's a good move name. You're going to get me started on, like, all the moves that have the same effects should be named the same things. And then someone will comment, in, Jap in, J in Japan, they all are. And uh, I don't know if that's true. I know in Japan, or in Japanese, Sky Attack is called Bird God, which is awesome. More of that vibe, please. Now my brain is telling me, what if you got it wrong? <laughs> what if it's uh, Brave Bird that's Bird God? I don't think so. I think it's Sky Attack. Will Sky Attack ever be used in any run by any Pokemon ever? Uh, I think maybe yes. Uh, I know one other uh, YouTuber who used it, but I don't want to spoil the run that it was in. Go watch all of Van Man's videos and you'll find out. Okay. So the extra training is making this section faster because I'm one-hitting more Pokemon. Uh, it's God Bird. Okay, God Bird. It's still pretty awesome. Okay, so we're 41. We need one more level. And we're probably going to get that from Price and these electrodes. That'll give us 42 exactly to defeat Jasmine. This is all feeling like really good. I'm liking, I'm really liking how this is turning out. This run is going much better. Like, it's not, um, it's not fast, but it, everything is, is lining up how it should be. Oh, someone asked about uh, GDQ, I think, 
That's like AGD, AGDQ. I did not watch it this year. I haven't had time, honestly. Like, I've been just head down in the code, trying to make everything work so that we can actually get to, like, producing videos again. Because I haven't recorded any voiceover since, like, December 24th or something like that. I have literally been on vacation from that. But vacation from that is me coding every day. GDQ has lost something. It's definitely, like, um... It's definitely different now that, like, more people know about it, and it's, like... Like, I don't really have, like, too many opinions on it, but I remember it, like... It felt like that kind of thing that was, like, really special when it first started happening. Okay, sleep powder. I'll put it in the place of leech life. Knock the pile of swine out. <laughs> I love when it uses fury attack. Such a bad move. Okay, that's that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's something... Uh, someone said it feels corporate. That's like uh, something I notice about those like bigger YouTube productions. And like, I uh, genuinely like... I'll be honest, like, it would be amazing if I had, like, a bigger budget for my videos every year. That would just, like, that'd be awesome. We could do so many cool things, software-wise. That said, um, I think when the production gets to a certain size, then, like, it does start having that feeling of, like, corporate. It feels more corporate. I don't know if that's the vibe I want my stuff to have. I, 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 well, I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure that's not the vibe I want my stuff to have. Um, we're going to give it the Paralyzed Cure Berry here. It might break the overlay. I apologize if it does. But that's the right place, so we're, we're going to go with it. Okay, here we go. Sleep Powder, come through for me. That's what you need to do. Okay, so we're going to two-hit all of this and maybe to hit the steelix yeah i don't even need to put the steelix to sleep now because of hidden power ice so yeah this this fight's much easier knowing that you need sleep powder and then just using hidden power ice it's sweet all right let's go uh we should get sludge bomb Obviously, it's not useful for Jasmine, so it's okay that I forgot it for a little bit. But, like, Swift is not useful, and I'm not going to get Return. Right? Please rejoice. There's always at least one person on... It feels like there's always at least one person on all of my Crystal videos that's just like, Ban Return! Ban Return! Like, I know, I know, it's boring. I don't actually know if I need the Pink Bow. Can just probably skip it entirely. Let's go. We'll uh, we'll equip the the poison barb at some point here. Like right now, while I'm remembering. So that's ten percent boost to poison type damage. Compromise by banning frustration. <laughs> the move that is like probably not going to be used in a solo challenge. Yeah, that's the thing about Gen 2 is like if you ban if you ban return, then the rest of the game just gets more grindy. It doesn't get like more strategically interesting. Cause like the same solutions are just gonna work, but they just need higher levels. It's like, oh, you don't have return. So you just have to grind a little bit longer till you can two hit Karen's Umbreon. Or like, oh you don't have return? Okay, so like just like grind a little bit longer until you beat Petrol's coughings. You know, we've been like, we, there's been some talk about like GDQ losing the magic, but honestly, I would love to like do a GDQ. That would be so much fun. But I, I don't think, I think they play on like original hardware and stuff. And so like my setup is just, my setup is not really compatible. Shadowpaw, thank you for the $5.
Really appreciate it. Scott.exe could not be installed. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's think through this before I... Just jump into it. I don't need more health. We'll be fine. Yeah, Curse was useless. I don't actually think I need it. I'll skip it entirely this time. Because Sleep Powder is our path to victory. We can have something else. Like, we could have... Protect, maybe? Because it protect uh, combos pretty well with uh, with leftovers to just buy time here and there for a tiny bit of health and then you can um, survive things like Snorlax's hits or uh, Charizard's hits. I have the elixir that I can use down here. Where are you? There you are. And we're going to heal before this fight for sure. Oop. Delfo, thank you for the five euros. And also thank you for the layout. I, I was looking at it. It's cool. We'll have to talk more about it. Uh, yeah, that was the right choice. <laughs> I, I think... Maybe I shouldn't have attacked there and let myself get paralyzed. It's probably not the best play, because if I hit myself, could be bad with curse like that. Mm -hmm. First reset. Paralyzed Curberry for this one. Bad luck on the Magnemite. Um, yeah, the rival has flame wheel for this fight. I just knocked it out in one hit. Now nah, it's fine if he paralyzes me. How did a fighting type lose to Gen 2 Sneasel? I know, right? Doesn't make any sense. It's interesting though that like this is the only battle in the game where the or the only rival four where the he doesn't have his fully evolved starter. Yeah, it gets hard to read when it gets grayed out. True. Okay, well, don't know what to say at this point. We're we're speeding through the game using sludge bone on coughings. Oh, there is a max potion over here. It's kind of nice to grab. I'm thinking now that we're in this, like the final time is going to be like maybe 130. Which is significantly faster than the last run, but still not a very competitive time within Generation 2. I actually think that Butterfree will play better than Venomoth in this game. That's because it gets Sleep Powder much earlier on. You can solve a lot of problems without training if you just have decent speed and a sleep move. <laughs> Chad cost Vileplume 10 minutes. 
Honestly, I didn't think he was going to call 22 times. I was like, he's going to call a what, like three times? Like, it's it'll be fine. It's definitely the, the scripts that I'm running to alter the game time. It's a lot of vitamins. Venomoth's going to the gym. I still have ethers, so I can heal with those. I don't know how the phone mechanics work, because I never have to deal with them, right? Like... There's some mechanics in this game, like contest mechanics. I have no idea how they work because for a solo running video, it's just usually not relevant. Like I, there might be some case, some edge case where it's like, you need the like luchador Pikachu or whatever to do some specific thing. And it's like, okay, until that day, I will not understand these mechanics. Yeah, contests are in gen three. Uh, we'll be fine. Yeah, Sludge Bomb is good enough for this run. Sludge Bomb is... It's so nice when there's a move that you can just use that is better than Return. See, this is what happens to Return in Generation 3 and in Generation 4. It feels like a really good option in some cases when you don't have another option, but it's kind of like the, f the default fallback move which is way less like um, intrusive than it is here in Generation 2 where it's like the go-to move. You fall back to other stuff that's more interesting. Like if you get the elemental punches, it's typically the case that you fall back from return to the elemental punches. Imagine if it was Sludge Bomb like in Gen 4, like special. Yeah, it would be good. On Venomoth, that would be amazing. I already did that. Let's go. Oh. So this time I'm going to pick up the Never Melt Ice because I actually have an Ice type move. Whereas last time I didn't. Never melt ice over here. I don't think I need rest. I'm just going to skip it entirely. Picking it up wastes time, but also um, using it when it's not actually going to help that much is... You, you burn a lot of time just trying to wake up from sleep and trying to heal again and then wake up from sleep and heal again. It's like... Yeah. Oops. Yeah, sleep turns slow down runs. It's really true. So, like, I really like what's going on here. Is like, if you look up, like, Hidden Power is going to do more to the Dragon types than Sludge Bomb. That's so nice when that's the case. It's like, okay, yeah, using the super effective move makes more sense. Sludge Bomb is the move that I'm using as the go-to move. And then Return would be, like, if neither of these moves were good. Um, th That seems like how the game should be played. Where you have like your go-to move or two go-to moves and then you have a fallback move and then maybe like a status move or something like that. It seems uh, quite interesting that way. But so often these Gen 2 runs specifically just turn into only return. That kid talks about rats. He says rats. 
Maybe Chad and him should study rats together. But I think he says rats more as an expression, like rats. Um, okay, let's go. I probably should have the poison barb for this. I think I'm going to be okay, though, without it. Because I have hidden power ice, and it's special. Which, obviously, Venomoth has way more special attack than regular attack. Okay. Let's go to the Dragon's Den, where I don't need to get Dratini, because we have Psyduck. Just reminding everyone, because someone... It's probably going to remind me about the Tratini because I always forget it. <laughs> also, why is it like we were past the 8th gym and Pokemon are level 37? Something is a little off about that. Here's, an, uh, here's a small time save with Psyduck. You can teach both Whirlpool and Waterfall, only, only opening the inventory once in this location, where you have to open the inventory twice because you have to teach Whirlpool to get past this. Then you pick up the Dratini, and then you teach Waterfall. Plus, you have to go through all the dialogue to get the Dratini, go back in the house, that sort of thing. So there are some time savings here, which um, make up for the fact that you have to search for a little bit of time to grab the Psyduck and also like actually catch it. I think it's probably slightly slower with the Psyduck, but I'm I'm gonna eventually crunch the numbers on that and come to a conclusive like a conclusive conclusion. Just a great statement. I will come to some kind of conclusion about it and then that's what I'll be doing from there. The repel always wears off somewhere around here. There. I got a little bit further that time because I didn't have to go and get the Psyduck. I can execute faster if I can see what I'm doing. That's a nugget also, you don't need it. Or Kenny's here in this little like notch. Hmm. I don't think I got the rare candy south of Goldenrod. Does anyone remember me getting the rare candy south of Goldenrod? Oh, I think I did get it now. Also, sometimes you forget to teach Whirlpool when it's convenient to in the Dragon's Den and then uh, Waterfall. Then you have to teach it there. That wastes time. Uh, I didn't get it. You got the rare candy and golden rod. Okay, cool. I didn't get one. Oh no! I no, I did. I did. I did. It makes sense. The one that I didn't get is the one that's in Kanto. No. Wait. What? There's one missing. Which one am I missing? Which one am I missing? Which one am I missing? I got that one. I got that one. Well, we'll skip it. I don't know. I'm missing one of the rare candies. I have five right now. Now I have six. I should have seven. Did I really miss the lighthouse one? I was hoping I wouldn't have missed the lighthouse one. No, I just got Mount Mortar. I got Roll Islands. Has to be the lighthouse one. I'm like very sure that I got the one in Violet City. It's fine. One level lower is not going to be a problem. Beat Dennis and then escape rope. No! Throwing for content. I know, right?
I think I burnt my Paralyzed Cureberry, so I can't do that again here. Kind of annoying. Well, we'll be okay, right? Okay, here we go. Rival 5. The question mark man himself. Should have used Hidden Power Ice. It's okay, though. Typhlosion, Sludge Bomb. Poisoned. Flame Wheel does about a third. Knock it out. Level 51, Magneton time. Uh, in this case, Hidden Power Ice for the most damage. Sonic Boom. Okay, that's really good. And then it missed Thunder Wave because of the AI's 25% debuff on chance to hit. So, lucky and an easy win. Okay, let's do the league. I'll give Never Melt Ice for this one because there's Flyers and the Executor, which I can hit with Hidden Power. It'll do a lot of damage. Um, obviously, Sludge Bomb will do a lot of damage too. But I think we already have the Jinx covered and the Slowbro is going to survive. Psychic. Place of Psybeam. I can confirm Escape Row after Dennis. Okay. I don't actually think I'm going to need it. And Fortress is going to suck. Nah, it's fine. We'll, I think we'll put it to sleep this time and then Psychic it down slowly. It's luckily not very terrifying. Like... It would be scary if it, it went for explosion more often, but you have to get it to low health before it likes to do that. Hey, it's Venomoth versus Venomoth. Who wins? The fighting type or the psychic type? Well, clearly the psychic type. Should have... Oh no, psychic's the right choice there. Nothing that bypasses accuracy, so... I'm trying to save psychic PP for the fortress. <laughs> okay, fortress. Sleep. Psychic. Four hit. It's gonna be a four hit unless I crit. Oh, maybe three. Maybe three. Three. Nice. Not bad. And then we'll ether after this and fight Bruno. Hopefully the Machamp doesn't crit with Rock Slide. Okay, here we go. Psychic. It feels so right to use Psychic with the Venomoth. I don't know what happened there. I feel like my controller like disconnected or something for a moment. Also, why does Bruno have a Max Potion? I say that every time. It should be a full restore. It's so weird. All right, him on top got bugged there. It was like not, it's just like sitting on the overlay like it was still, it still survived. I don't know when, why that happens sometimes. It's one of those like edge case bugs where you're just like, you look at it and you go like, ah, uh, I don't know. And it's like really hard to reproduce as well. Which makes everything annoying. The worst bug is an intermittent bug. The best bug is a psychic flying bug. Okay, Karen, here we go. Umbreon, come on. No sand attack or miss, 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 miss. Confuse ray. Okay, that's okay. No. Okay, faint attack. Come on. Yes, no sand attack. Feeling much better about this. Uh oh, that's bad. Never mind. Oh. Ah. Okay, so I used my rare candies here last time. I'm going to do that again. This time six will exactly get me to 60. So it's the same. I just had more efficient training earlier in the game. Here we go. Yeah, restore Psyche before Karen, of course. You gotta hit the Gengar with that. Mm. 
You don't get like. Probably should ice. Hidden power ice that or psychic that. Okay. Karen. Defeated. Moving on to Lance. I think this one should be fairly straightforward. Like, I'm faster than everything. I have Hidden Power Ice. I have Sleep Powder. Sludge Bomb's going to two-hit the Gyarados. Then I'll one-hit all the Dragonites. But he's going to send in Dragonite, or uh, Aerodactyl next. I think I just Hidden Power Ice it. Yep. And then I can tank the Charizard's hit now and not have to use Sleep Powder. Oh. Because of the rain, because I went faster and not using Sleep Powder, I had rain, so then the Charizard went for Wing Attack, did even less damage. That... So, yeah, Hidden Power really, really, really changes this fight. So much easier than last time. Alright, I think we are optimistically on track for 130 finish, but probably like a 135 now. No, don't touch the window. Yeah, return Swords Dance, that would be good. If only Absol was a uh, was a normal type. It looks like a normal type, but it's not. Yeah, I'm going to skip the rare candy. It's going to take, I think, too long to get. And I don't need it because my speed is enough for red. Like, if my speed was lower, I, the rare candy would be very important, but it's just not with this kind of speed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was a kid, I could not get off the SS Hequa for the longest time, mostly because I didn't want to talk to people because I didn't like reading. And so, like, I never figured out that I... Or it took me a long time to figure out that I needed to actually, like, go talk to that guy who just, like, walks in front of you, but he doesn't do anything. It took me a long time to talk to him and then find the sailor, then talk to the sailor, and then finally have the battle with him and then be able to get by the other guy. I distinctly remember asking my friends about that area and being like, how did you get out? Like, I'm... Like, he just blocks my way and I can't do anything. And like the ship doesn't arrive, I think, until you complete it, so that I was literally just stuck on the ship. Let's go. <sighs> I'm getting tired now. There's not definitely not going to be another run after this one. I appreciate everyone hanging around. No. Lots of misplays during this fight. I should really be using Psychic on some of these Pokemon, and then I should be using Sludge Bomb on other Pokemon, and now finally I should be using Hidden Power Ice on the Jump Bluff. Um, brief spoiler, so plug your ears for 15 seconds, starting now if you don't want one. I'm doing a Jump Bluff run soon. I'm hyped for it. I think it's going to be bad. <laughs> uh... I won't be streaming that one. Yeah, and Crystal. 
almost four hours. Yeah, it's been it's been a lot. Yes, everyone can listen again. Please come back. Jumpluff is one of those Pokemon that when I saw it as a kid, I was like, oh, I love this Pokemon. Then I put it on my team for like one second and was like, oh, it has Splash. And then I was like, nope. I was thinking about grass types in Johto because a lot of people have said that Johto is really unkind to grass types and they are right. Let's think about that. So grass is weak to flying, the first gym. Grass is weak to bug, the second gym. Grass is neutral against, um, grass is neutral against uh, normal, but if your grass type happens to be a flying type, you are weak to Whitney's rollout. Uh, grass is not uh, weak to ghost, but poison type ghosts resist grass type moves. Then Chuck actually kind of has a weakness to grass types because Polyrath is water type. So that's a, the first good matchup. Then you have Price who's super effective. I know he's technically seventh, but he feels like the sixth gym leader. Jasmine of course resists them with the exception of Steelix. And uh, Clara obviously resists them and has super effective damage, uh, a nice move on one of the Dragonairs. From there, most grass types are paired with the poison type, so Will would be super effective. Koga is the poison type, so he's super effective. Bruno, mm, neutral matchup there, but the special damage from grass types is probably pretty good. Karen's ace is uh, fire type, so she's got an advantage. And then Lance has flying types. It's like, what?! Game Freak really didn't want you to use grass types. And I know that that's not really like... I don't think Game Freak set out to make their grass type bad. Because if you take an inventory of all the gym leaders, you discover that they used all of the remaining eight types with the exception of dark type as the Johto gyms. So they basically said, oh, we used eight types for the Kanto gyms. Let's use the other eight types for the Johto, type, for the Johto gyms. It's kind of a neat neat way of approaching it, especially for a sequel, but it really has the consequence of just making grass types feel awful. Then you get to Kanto, like, Erica resists you, Surge resists you, Sabrina is going to be super effective if you're a poison type. Those are the first, most easily accessible gym leaders. So, yeah... Don't worry, we'll we'll go through all that again in a video very soon. Actually, not very soon, just everyone. Very soon in my production schedule is like three months, just so you know. Well, this is going well now. Okay, that could have been bad there. I didn't save. It could have perish songed. If it perish songed, it would get really annoying if the Starmie was able to confuse, but I'm luckily able to one hit the Starmie, so there's not a problem there. When that repel wore off, I was like, is it Chad? It's not. No Chad in this run. The world feels a little bit le more joyless without Chad phoning us all the time. No game audio? Of course no game audio. It's three times speed or four times speed. It would just be... It would make your ears bleed.
Okay, um, this should be fairly simple. And then once this is over, I think that was like one of my first sleep powder. Oh, don't do not do that. Uh, this was one of my first sleep powder uses. Really haven't had to use it much in this run. That's like the power of hidden power ice. I'm doing this mistake quite a bit. I need to go to Saffron and pick up the radio card before going to Vermilion. That's a little inconsistency in my play that I want to sort out. Hopefully in the first couple months of the year so that it doesn't persist into later runs. It doesn't lose that much time. Like... I would have had to fly there anyways, so the only time I lost is the time wandering around in Vermilion, which is like maybe five seconds. Okay, we're gonna try and get by three drill. Shout out to Squidgy. Okay, so I think this is how it works. Nope, never mind. Alright, so I gotta I gotta time that one. The goal is to be able to walk straight up and just get by him with whatever you're doing. I think it might be cut the tree, step to the side, and then walk straight up. Like, that might get us what we need. Or walk one step forward, pause, then walk all the way up. In silver, this trainer doesn't even rotate. I know. They made a bunch... I feel like there's more... Like a significant significantly more spinners in in crystal no well he can't catch me heading south Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on. I'm not going to get 130, but let's get under 135. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's a convenient tile for the super repel to run out on one before getting to land. All right, Blaine. It's time. The mag cargo is so bad. It's so bad. Those other two Pokemon are not great. This time I have enough psychics to just one shot Janine's entire team with. I'm also noticing I'm getting much faster and more consistent with my menuing in Crystal. I had the weirdest thought yesterday. I was like going to bed and I was like, I really want to play Crystal version. And that's why where this stream came from, by the way. Um, a Psychic says 101 power because it's getting a type base boost. So it has base 90 power and then it gets a 12.5% boost from Sabrina's gym badge. So its effective power is 101. It's technically 101.5. If you go back in the stream, you'll notice that its power is lower before I defeat Sabrina, and then it changes once I obtain the badge. Okay. Time for blue. He was quite simple last time, with the exception of the Arcanine, which was kind of scary. Ooh. I didn't give this last time, but I'm going to give it this time. Let's go. Pokemon loves to round down. Yeah, they really do. Like, everything rounds down. That that one is a display thing, though. Uh, I choose to round that one down. Uh, it looks so bad if the overlay displays 0.5. It, 
it looks like complete trash. Um, I tried so many ways of making it work, but none of them worked. So I just like, we're like, wow, well, we're just going to like take off that, um, that decimal point. It's fine. And he's using full restores now. So if I just keep him on the run and crit, then he, he gets knocked out. He would have got knocked out even if he didn't crit or if I didn't crit. Knock out the Alakazam. Um, this is secured now, I think. Yeah. Easy win. Blue is like Venomoth very capable when it has hidden power. The only thing that like would speed this thing up is like imagine if it started with Psybeam or Psychic. Like that'd be great. Obviously confusion would speed it up, but one of those moves would be much better. That would make this thing feel very good. Oops. A little bit sloppy there. Let's set the waypoint here. Oh, I can, uh, I can use flash in here. I'm, uh, I'm going to knock out some Pokemon so that I get to level 69. I'm realizing I'm one level lower this time, which is not going to be... I don't think it's going to be consequential against red, but hopefully the game agrees that I don't need that damage rounding threshold. If I need the damage rounding threshold, I'm going to be real sad because we're going to have a lot of losses. But I don't think I do. 69. Nice. Okay. Time to change up the move set. So I'll put protect. Yeah, because curse was useless and we don't need hidden power ice here. I think that's it. <laughs> Venomoth has very little, like, setup for red. It's just like, yep, protect, that's it. Let's go. Um, Sludge Ball one-hit the Pikachu, or it should. Yeah, okay, good. And Snorlax, which we are going to Sleep Powder on. It won't do anything this turn. Then it's going to Snore, but because I'm wanting to attack it, I'll just keep attacking. Oh! Oh, that's, that's probably a loss. I'm just going to reset. Paralysis is like death when you're doing a solo challenge. Uh, it's faster and safer to just reset if you get paralyzed early on into a fight. Pretty unlucky, honestly. It's like 30% chance off body slam and it had to wake up that turn. Okay, we still have that damage range. Good. Put this to sleep so it doesn't set up sunny day. Okay, it's set up sunny day, so we'll just uh, put it to sleep and buy some time now. Oh. Um... Oh, it's doing very little damage, and the sun's going to run out if it just keeps attacking. So, yep. Charizard, hopefully Sleep Powder works. Come on. Come on! Yes. Okay. Good lord. Special defense. Nope. Sludge Bomb for more damage. Crit. Okay, perfect. Sleep Powder on the Espeon. Two shot with Sludge Bomb. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Mm, maybe not. Okay, yeah, we're going to do it. That's going to do a lot, but we're okay. Ta-da! Okay, Venomoth beats Red with a time of 1 hour, 33 minutes, and 9 seconds, with 3 resets at level 73. Pretty good. Um, Like, it's under 135, which is... Which is nice. Yeah, I think not bad is probably the best way to like think of this one. It's like, it's not Pineco. I have done Pineco before. Pineco was awful. I just did Abra. I just did Centret. Venomoth is much better, of course. But I do think even starting with it fully evolved, it doesn't really feel like it gets over the awkwardness of the early game. Like... 
Uh, sorry, just a second. I had an error when I stopped recording. So I'm just going to send that to Snowy. So that they are aware that there is a bug. Um, it's okay. The replay is stored in an uh, uncompressed format. So I still have access to it. I didn't lose it. 7 out of 10, too many bugs. Yeah. It's starting set is disappointing, but good enough. Yeah, it's like, it feels like it just takes too long to get going. Like, imagine if we started with Confusion in the place of Foresight, and then you put Psybeam at level 25 or 28, and Sleep Powder at level 36. This Pokemon becomes so much better if that, if just those, like, it just learns some moves a little bit better, like, sooner. But I really think what they wanted this to be is they wanted it to be, um, Butterfree, but slower to, like, train up to be better than Butterfree. So essentially, if, like, you get Butterfree, it gets really good earlier on and you feel great about yourself. But if you take the time to train up the Venomoth, then it ends up being the stronger Pokemon long term. And I think that makes sense. After all, on this channel, Butterfree was my original mascot and now it has switched to Venomoth. So I realized that this thing is, of course, more powerful it's a dragon ice type after all. Thanks so much for watching. This has been a really fun stream. If you made it this far, you're incredible. I'll see you next time.